Okay, Don back again with another stream and uh, let's make sure everything was working. Oh, hitting the wrong buttons on the wrong thing. Okay, um, I just started on the desktop. Well, let's go to the camera now. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I changed it back to, uh, of course, it's way behind. I changed my setting from FFM peg back to normal, whatever that is, um, because it was, okay, it's almost done. Almost, come on, come on, one more. Okay, it's done. That's really bad. Dud, I almost thought it was better. Okay, now, see, it was at 45%, but it goes down to 22, 21, 20. So, yeah, uh, I don't know if it would... I'll have to watch the video back, but it didn't look to me like it was really any better than, you know, the ones I've been trying to fix. So just just a, a, a FFmpeg is using more resources on the machine than whatever's built into OBS Studio. It's a good software. It's, it's uh, I, I thought it used FFmpeg, really, but evidently it's got its own transcoder. <coughs> um, it's pretty good, evidently, and it does a good, it's always done a good job and, and didn't use a lot of resources. Let's go back to camera one again. And one, two, three, four, five. Uh, really behind still. <clears throat> I'm not gonna wait this time. Let's go to camera two. One, two, three, four, five. Not too bad, it's okay. Now let's see, a lot of times, one, two, three, four, five. Why is that? That's not so bad. So, I mean, I would swap positions, put camera two up here. You know, I always like to start at the camera that's pointing at me, do a little talk, and then go to doing what I'm gonna do. I could swap the cameras, I'd be a pain in the butt, but uh, I could put I will have to swap them on the tripods that they're on. Well, actually, this one's on, not on a tripod. It's on the uh, mic stand, and this one's on a tripod. I can swap them, but, of course, then um, they're still going to be... I, I labeled them in my scenes the same as... Let me go to the desktop. I labeled them in my scenes the same as the cameras are actually have little stickers on them that say phone... Well, they say phone one, I think, and, or Dawn one or whatever. I think it's Dawn 1, because I had to, yeah, Dawn 1, Dawn 2, and then Theta was the other one. But so now they're, anyway, their cameras are 1, 2, and 3. And so, you know, I could swap their places, but, and I had done that back and forth when I, for a while. You know, I just, oh, well, no, I want this one here. Oh, no, I want that one there. Well, finally realized, put 1, the one that I'm going to use first most of the time. 2 is the one. You know, now now they're just seeming in my mind. That's camera one, that's camera two, and this is camera three. And uh, that's why I don't want to swap them. And it just doesn't make any sense. They're all, they're identical machines, you know. Uh, it doesn't make any sense as to, I suppose there could be a malfunction in camera one, you know, and that's why it does that. Um, it's way behind again. But sometimes this one does it. One, two three four five it does it quite often well it okay this is the this one is the one camera two is the one that drives me nuts lately when i'm trying uh, it's the one that made me quit making my regular videos quit working on my server and try to fix this because uh it, it was just like a minute behind it seemed like it was a long time maybe 30 seconds but and so I'm talking about what's on the screen, and it, uh, you know, I'm, it, it never even gets shown. I'm talking about something else, you know. It's, uh, the machine's already, already booted. I'm already into the desktop and showing around the desktop, and finally it begins to show the desktop, you know. You're still looking. I'm talking about the desktop. You're still looking at the boot screen, you know. So that's why I'm trying to fix it. It didn't used to be near that bad, except for maybe if I'd ran it for hours or something. So uh, um, so that doesn't help. Let's see, go, go back over here. I'll show you what I just did again in this video. Um, these are my screenshots that I just made. 
So that was uh, after I, uh, well, I wasn't recording then, after I, right after I changed my settings. So I changed them back to type standard uh, on record, output recording, and I did not change it from FLV. I started to try MKV, but I know that that's going to take more resources than encoding. A, it's, it, it's the newest version of MP4, really, basically. Uh, well, I, to me it is. Anyway, it's in the same family. <clears throat> um, I think if you look at a video that's an MK4 and you look at its, you know, you right-click on it and look at its properties, it'll say it's an MP4. But that's why I think that. I'm pretty sure that does. I, well, I have an MKV somewhere, but no, I'm not going to do it right now. I could show it, but <clears throat> um, have some on my backup drive. Anyway, FLV, ever since the newer version of uh, OBS Studio has streamed, FLV has streamed the best. It's got good quality and the least overhead on the system, so I'm going to stick with that. And I'm going to have to stick with standard on this machine anyway. It's a, this is an in, uh, Intel I, Lenovo. It's an i5. It's a Lenovo brand machine, i5 Intel processor, quad core uh, with 4 gig of RAM. So that's what I'm going to have to stick with. And uh, so then this is where I was, you know, switching it to uh, FFmpeg. And that did not work. That uh, was staying around 40, 39, 40% 40 uh, CPU usage. And then it went, I caught it going up to 88, 90%. And that's when I thought, man, the machine's liable to lock up. So I got out of that video and changed it back. So, um, and then if I did, see, I was thinking about doing MP4 because I saw the re somebody recommending doing that. They said they were streaming games. They're playing games and streaming at the same time, and they were with OBS, and they were saying they'd like to use MP4, and it used the list overhead and everything. Well, this right here gave you a warning. Uh, you probably don't want to do that, and so I decided not to do that. And it, that's when it said it says, "Well, go ahead and use MP4 if that's what you want," and then re remux it to transcode it. They usually say remux or transcode to uh, <clears throat> you know whatever it is you want. So. Um, That's not gonna, it didn't help, and it's, you know, my machine's not gonna handle it anyway, doing it any other way. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, see, there's one I actually saved as an MP4. Um, the previous one I did, oh, I was doing MP4? I didn't know I was doing MP4. I thought I was doing FFmpeg, but doing FLV. But that's an MP4, huh? I mean, look at those screenshots again. Did I mess up my setting? Maybe that's what happens when you uh, use FFmpeg. I don't know why it would. Yeah, I didn't have M. I didn't have. Uh, wait. Okay, that's when I'm doing FFmpeg. Where? Oh. I didn't change any of the defaults. See the container format? I didn't, so the default must have been MP4. So I wonder if I can check, change it to. That's why it was working so hard, because I do know that uh, that's why I got. See, there's, I was looking at, it says record. See, when you're in the standard view here, it says recording format. And when you're in, uh, Custom output FFmpeg. Now you've got all these other options, which is what I'm used to previous to this version of OBS Studio with every other kind of video uh, program I've used. Uh, any kind of transcoding or editing or whatever, you know. Well, not. It. Well, when you're an editing program, that of course transcodes when you're done editing. But anyway, uh, so I just left it on the default format. I think I can go in there and see what's available with, no, I can't change, you'd have to change that, and then that's going to break things, I think. Well, not as long as I hit cancel. Let's try it, because I really want to see. I already know it's not working really well, so if I can figure out something, if I can do FFM, well, I don't see why FFmpeg would work well with FLV, because... I don't remember anything to do with FFmpeg really recommending using Flash. That's the thing there. 
Okay, so let's get out of there. I mean, I can't change it during this, for, but I can show what's in the settings and stuff. So go to output, go to settings. If you did, if I didn't down at the bottom right, or that's a quick way to get to it anyway. And then streaming. This is the streaming tab. Then you've got the recording tab. And oh yeah, see you can't even look around while you're streaming. I would have, I can't. You can only do that while you're not recording. That makes sense because it would break everything. <clears throat> and then uh, audio, I haven't bothered with bothered that any. And the re, I, I didn't know what that replay buffer was. Uh, it's an actual replay. You got you, you save some video and and uh, it's they say it's for gaming uh, broadcasts. When I looked it up the other day, and you, you save up to so much time or so much megabytes, it, and then you you can instant replay. <laughs> it might be fun, you know, but I'm not gonna. That's more overhead, so I'm not do, trying to do anything like that. Okay, so maybe I, okay. Let's try again because I still the uh, well I'm. Yeah, let's try. Let's stay like we are. I want to do a little looking up on this problem first. And then if I don't have any other ideas, I may try that. I don't think it'll work, but I'll try FFmpeg with, if I see if I can change it to FLV. Cancel you. Okay, so <clears throat> let me make sure everything's still working. Okay. Um, we'll get over here. Uh, I haven't, I've been uh, <clears throat> using OBS Studio for years now, but I haven't done, a, I did enough study to get it going with it, and see, I already knew a lot about, or I, enough, I don't know a lot or enough about audio, video, and coding, and all this stuff before I started with a <coughs> OBS Studio, that I tried, mostly try to rely on what I know, or try to, what I try to remember, and um, of course, there's always things you may overlook, and need to learn a lot a lot of what I learned about streaming live streaming was through VLC uh, video land that's how I used to do anything like that and it it used to be I could do it in the older versions but they actually they changed it up and I, I guess they were trying to make it easier but they took away all the settings that I knew how to do kind of things that I was just showing and talking about there in OBS and I can't ever get it to work anymore <clears throat> so uh, I forget the little gotchas and they don't have uh, any help in there anymore. They used to have more help in there too in the settings and they don't have help saying okay if you do this you know that's going to happen and so and so and so and so. So you put in what you want and it either works or it don't work in that VLC. Alright OBS Studio there's one of the last things I typed OBS Studio um I'm going to go ahead and go right to Fedora 29 and it'll still give me results. But if there's anything about Fedora 29, I'll like, what do I want? Uh, I'll just say OBS Studio Audio Video Sync. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and put that in there. That's talking about some other. Oh, okay. Uh, Software, I believe. I think I have a folder. Software OBS Studio, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> Mantis BT Open Broadcaster Software. I never knew there was anything, any other name but OBS Studio. But that is. Fails to build from open source. That doesn't sound like anything to do with what I want, but let's look for a second just in case. Okay, this must be OBS Project. Well, let's see what it is I'm looking at.
This is kind of, uh, I guess this is. VLC audio out of sync. That's exactly what I'm having trouble with. But how do you get there? These are bugs, I guess. There we go. I'm trying to set up. A scene where there is only a VLC, VLC video source. I want video to only play when the scene is visible and pause when another scene is selected. So I select the pause when not visible, unpause when visible, visibility behavior. The audio is slightly out of sync, so I open up the advanced audio properties and add 300 milliseconds sync offset, which is what I've been doing over and over and over. I've changed it a million times. Delay the video, which corrects things. The problem is when I switch between scenes, the audio falls out of sync. Exactly. When I turn to the scene, video VLC source, I'll stay on VLC, VLC source. If I stay on the VLC scene, when the video, what's this? My scene is, my stream is broken. Oh, crap. No, it came back. Okay, well, it stopped out for a minute, so I don't know what caused that. <clears throat> I didn't do anything to cause it that I know of, but it reconnected, uh, so I might have to upload the backup video because I am making a backup video, right? Let's make sure that's working. Yep. Okay. So, um, where was I? The problem is when I switch between scenes, the audio falls out of sync. When I return to the scene with a VLC video source, I, if I stay on the VLC scene, when the video instantly plays, gosh, the audio is fine. It looks like the audio offset isn't accounted for when the playback resumes after pause. Well, I... I, he's got the same problem, but uh, his his sentence is, uh, I'm tired, I guess. Steps to reproduce. Set up two scenes with the second having VLC video source. Select a video and the pause when not visible. I do mind that way because otherwise, if you don't, it'll work, it'll, it'll fill up all the cache and everything, and maybe even the memory, all your memory on your machine. It'll fill up your memory on your machine after a while and lock your machine up. That's why I can't just use a straight. I can set up a, I tried it. You can set up a video. I did do it. I was saying it's hard to do, but I did set up a video, a VLC video stream coming from my camera. I picked it up. You know, I, I mean, it's already being streamed on my IP webcam, so all I did was get the address and, and bring it into VLC player. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, if you pause it, it keeps, keeps filling up your actual memory, your RAM on your machine. So I couldn't use it that way. I could even show that in a minute. Well, that'd just be a demonstration. But VLC player, this one right here, you can just pick it up. You know, the IP addresses that I showed whenever I was going here to zoom it in and all that, you'd use that. Uh, okay, so anyway, um, select the video, pause when not visible, unpause when visible, visibility behavior. But I'm a, so I'm afraid to uh, take off the pause when not visible because it'll still be playing in the background even though you're not presenting it and it'll be using up your resources on your machine. And the advanced audio controls add sync offset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll be, switch between scenes. Well, I don't know if they're going to have an answer, but this is definitely the problem I'm having. Uh, really bad, too. Yeah, it. oh, after the first time, it's really very random. I've been doing this. I've been having this problem back and forth for a year, at least. Audio offsets are not applied to the audio monitor in OBS. Make a sample recording and see if the issue persists there. That's it. That's the answer. Um, 
they're not applied to the audio monitor. So that explains something, though, because what I see is not what I get. I've been saying that over and over. It may not be as bad in the recording as it looks like in your monitor. Well, that's stupid. Why isn't it applied in real time? Really stupid. But that does not answer that. I, I don't, I mean, the guy obviously is saying this happens. He's not just saying, oh, this happens in my, in my monitor. It's happening to his stream, just like me, you know. Uh, at least I believe that's what he or she, it might not be a guy, is saying. So, um, okay. Well, that's what, okay. Audio delay sync. Let's see what this one says. There's no uh, no answer on that one. Let's go back towards the top. I might have skipped one. Improper ducking. Now that's somebody that I guess knows the. Uh, <laughs> I'm not using the audio offset right now, anyway. So major audio studio by study stutter. <laughs> Speaking of stuttering, by adding video delay sync. Monitor, but not stream audio desync over time. That's kind of, well, yeah, over time. Let's see. Well, there's nothing in there, no answer. Okay, now we're at the bottom. I kept going backwards, and now the that's the last one. This is all the way back in 14, so it's really not going to be worth looking at anyway. I just realized the dates. Yeah, there's no point in looking at 2014. Okay, so yeah, it's a problem, which I uh, kind of already knew that. There's one. So it's definitely a problem. It's coming up. Okay. This one's talking about a particular kind of capture card, I think. It's quite a few of uh, these posts. Seems to be a short, seems to be a source problem. Well, let's go see what this person answered there. Oh, you saw video. I knew that. Well, let's put it in here anyway. I don't, you know, it's the first time I've ever been to Twitch. I don't really know what it is. Let's just forget about that. Uh, I'm not going to play it because YouTube is so, uh, the copyright trolls, you know how they are, so they're liable to 
<laughs> flagged my video with having copyrighted material or something. It's just... Change the default parameter from 44100 to 4800 at 8 milliseconds delay. This roughly cleaned up a lot of it. The problem with electronics mic headphones can only do 4100 megahertz. Well, a lot of this is specific to, you know, different hardware. Okay, so... Um, Hard looking at forms. I'm not finding much. Whatever that was, it didn't come up anyway. Sync is not in there. Fix is not in there. Let's go to the bottom and see if they have anything. Let's see. What year is this? 2016 is probably too old anyway. If they're going to have a problem in the program and they fix it, you know, it shouldn't be two years. Well, I hope it's not two years. They're saying the test repo, the newest version, I guess, was fixing something. Okay, I'm not going to read that. Okay, so it kind of tells me that that it's an ongoing problem. And here's the thing, I'm using the Wi-Fi stream. Well, they, they were, too. <coughs> one of them did say, well, that one said they think it's a source issue, which is what I've been thinking all along. That's what I've been trying to fix is my source. So, And it may be a source issue because, in other words, it's the camera, the this, you know, everything to do with, and, and like I said over and over, the Wi-Fi I think the Wi-Fi really does, I th I've watched it so many times on the Wi-Fi Finder app in my phones, I think the Wi-Fi really does, uh, I'm looking at my, yeah, I'm still curious as to can I go with FFmpeg and FLV, then it might not overwork the machine, but and maybe I should try that before I go back, like, again, go back to changing I think I will. Before I go to changing the uh, frame, you know, dropping down the frames per second in my source uh, and having a jerky video, <laughs> then uh, I'll try one more time with that setting. I didn't actually get what I thought. One, two, three, four, five. Well, see, it's not as bad as it has been, but it's uh, behind. <clears throat> one, two, three, four four, five, about the same. See, uh, and then sometimes it, it's very random seeming. And it it may be more of a fluctuation, I mean, than anything, it may be a fluctuation in the Wi-Fi speeds because of radio interference and all that stuff. So it just may not be no way to fix a Wi-Fi stream is what I'm afraid. Um, Back to the desktop. What was I going to... I was thinking I'd show something. Okay, if I go into settings, but don't... Uh, oh, I forgot. Um, uh, during my break from, uh, from my last previous video, between that one and this one, or the one before that, <coughs> um, I forgot what I was going to do here now. I, I keep getting mixed up. Um... I don't know if I can show that. Yeah, maybe I can. Okay, I was having, I've been up for a long, long time. Here's my tripod with my uh, endoscope and see the long cable on it. Let's see if I can get close enough to that camera to show what I'm going to show here. Okay, you see the little white things? That's a giant paper clip. Those big, heavy duty ones. That's what I've got it held on there with. And I have some, they're twisty, they're locked, 
kind of like twisties with big, huge, double wired twisties that are on coffee bags is what's been holding it on there. That's the black in the middle there of that silver loop. I know you can't see that too good. Um, and look, well, it's probably better than it looks to me in the preview here. It's not a very big preview, but all those white things, those are, those are zip ties. So I zip tied it down really tight so that it doesn't twist. I mean, if you really gave it a, tw you know, you gave it a twank, then it would probably get out of whack. But right now, let's see if it's still good. We'll put it on endoscope. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, now that's orientated properly. That's my magnifying glass. If I, if I turn it sideways, it shows to be sideways, right? Left. So I can put something under there, and I was thinking I was gonna, you know, be showing the phones again. That's why I went ahead and did that. And I may hear in a little while, but now I'm thinking I wanna try that. <clears throat> That's gonna be my last resort, because once I probably once I do that, I'll leave it that way and just live with whatever I get. Uh, and then think about one day getting some USB cameras that can do USB. I know, well, of course, a DSLR would be, well, DSLRs aren't really the, you know, the best. They're, they're still expensive, and, I, you know, 4K cameras, uh, it would be wonderful to have a DSLR with a changeable lens and all that stuff, but that's expensive gear. But you can get a 4K camera. We can get one of those action cameras, 4K. Uh, Camera claims to be 4K for about 39 to 50 bucks, you know. Uh, wait if you want to wait for it to come from China, <clears throat> but uh, uh, I don't want a fisheye lens, uh, so I would probably I would probably be better to spend enough more, you know, 80 bucks, 100 bucks to get one that. There's two things I, I would want. It could be a little cheapo. Uh, Video camera, for but it doesn't have to be 4K, 1080. But that they have, there's not that much price difference now between 1080 and 4K. So I might as well get a 4K with a USB output and a real optical zoom. And then, uh, of course, I probably wouldn't buy two of them. And I mean a USB output of live video streaming out the USB, and then I can plug it into the computer, mount it on my mic stand, you know, I can put it behind me if I need to to go up my monitor and get a clear shot of the monitor. Of course, then I won't have all the, I mean, I can still use my phones, but if they're going to do this so badly, then, well, like right now, it's, it's not so bad. It's not that bad. I mean, it's kind of crappy that my mouth is, you know, not at all in sync, but um, if I could, well, if I could, if I could fix half the problem, that'd be good. But anyway, um, I really wasn't wanting to spend money on st stuff like that. Uh, really don't need to. I got. If I was going to spend a hundred to three hundred bucks, I want to buy me a server. That's the thing. I want. That's what I really want. So a real server. So uh, and I can get a used one for that. That would be. I saw a uh, uh, server for sale and of course it's probably gone I'm sure it's gone now but it was for 312 or 20, 310 and 340 I can't remember now actually I think there was going to be $45 shipping on it too so it was about three I don't know 310 to 320 and then 40 45 dollars shipping uh two six uh two six core processors and about 64 gig of RAM now that would do some do anything I want to do with a computer. And of course I can't have it in here with me, it's too loud, too much heat. So I would have to s control it remotely and that's the one reason why I'd have to put it in the garage and control and do everything on virtual machines and control it remotely. Uh, and there would be some lag there. Well, if my TP-Link works really well out there as a wireless repeater, then I can probably do that without a problem. The only thing is, I, if I end up having to run back and forth rebooting that router and all the time, that'd drive me nuts. So, you know, from here to the garage. But uh, <clears throat> then there's one option. Well, with the heat, you can't do that. Well, you could exhaust it out the window somehow. Or, you know, I mean, I've thought of ways to do that for many years. Never. That's a pretty big project building. A, <laughs> I mean, a regular, 
I, I, I thought about building one, you know, like out of a kitchen vent hood, but those are loud. And I thought, well, you could get a vent hood and then, and but see, you'd have to put the server in a, like an SKB case, you know, I, I used to do sound and all that stuff. I'm really used to those cases. You can put it into a, a pro audio video gear case that's meant to travel, insulate it to, to knock down the sound coming out of the box, and then, but you're gonna have to vent it or everything's gonna overheat and, and shut down. So you could open up the back and make a vent, a duck work that goes to your window, you know, and you'd have to leave your, my windows are the kind that slide, so, You'd have to have it about however wide your your duct work is, and then you've got to you'd have to get you a board or or metal or something that reaches from the top of the bottom of the window about four foot tall, and then it would have to be say ten inches wide, and then have a probably a round hole with some flex duct and a lot of work, <clears throat> but that could be done, and I could put it in my rack, you know. Uh, I have a, I could do that, but. <coughs> Or I could build me a box out of wood, but I got lots of other more important projects than doing that. So just putting it in the garage would be the the easy, the best thing for me, uh, which I did figure out last summer that machines can, if you keep the fans on them, they can handle 111 degrees <laughs> so outside. So probably at least 105 in in the garage. <laughs> okay, so um, that's Fahrenheit, folks. That's what we got here in USA, Texas. So, um, I people constantly go on about that. It got me thinking about it every time I say it now. I tell you the temperature. Every you see them think about that. But uh, some people try on their videos so hard to accommodate everybody, and they give you all the different, uh, you know, Fahrenheit and centigrade and Celsius and all that. And I'm not going to do that. You, you got Google just like I do. All right, so... Um, one blank again let's see was there anything I wanted to show before uh, let's go see see everything's still fine even though I, I did I opened up the system, the settings and junk but I didn't try to change anything so I didn't mess anything up and uh, you know earlier I messed around with my scenes a lot and you can actually do that and but I also messed up my endoscope but I was I was putting it in and taking it out, putting it in and taking it out. And finally, I got tired of it and said, that's enough. So, um, yeah, I, I can't think of anything that I'd rather try than changing to a different video format. There was another setting that I really never found. It might have been a different, older version. Another setting that I never found in one of those videos is something about force. Something to do with force, the... I think it said force the desktop sync to be the same as the camera sync. For, force the desktop to sync with camera input or something. I never saw anything remotely like that. So and it sounds, if that's what it said, it sounds backwards to me. If anything, I'd want to force the camera inputs to sync with the desktop. But really, I do think it's like that one little <laughs> comment said, the one that I didn't go watch the video. He said, I think it's an input problem and I, 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 that's what I've thought all along and now I do think that again because uh, it's the only thing that really makes sense now all the different variables the Wi-Fi speed going up and down you can't do anything about that but I've just observed it over and well, I've just showed it in these last few videos when I'm really just focusing in on that I've seen it when I wasn't trying to pay attention to it I was trying to just get my work done but I've been sitting here focusing on it for the last two days and it is just completely random and so it's not something you can fix with an, uh, you know, an offset, with an async offset. <clears throat> That's what they call it, async. Or, well, like I showed before, right here, uh, I'll show what, we're talk what they're talking about. You right-click on your, in now this is my audio input from camera three that I'm not actually using right now. Wait a minute. How long have I been talking on the... Oh, I'm on the camera. I didn't intentionally... When did I switch? Did I uh, get everything out of whack? This scene has me... SM58 muted, and I'm talking on the wireless mic. What does this one have? 
it has me talking on the wireless mic. Well, at some point, I guess I switched to wireless mic and forgot I was still on it. As long as everything is good, let's look at the other camera. Make sure I didn't get... Sometimes I forget and click on the wrong thing, and I will have the wireless mic on in one scene and off in another. But it doesn't look like I did that. I guess at some point I switched to the wireless mic and forgot. I thought I was talking on the SM58 all this time. <clears throat> let's go ahead and do that. Let's get back on the SM58. Because I was fixing a mess because around I was with the in the settings area for the wireless mic. Okay, now we're on the SM58. Okay, so um, now we're in the desktop, and the way I bring my uh, audio in from camera three is with you bring it in with a VLC stream. So first, we'll look at the properties. This is how how you you lay it out the IP address of that uh, source, and then you have to put forward slash audio dot wave. That's the only way it'll work with. Uh, I would, well, that's the way you do it with IP webcam. Uh, if you were doing VLC as a streamer or some other app, it would probably be different. Uh, but I think this may depend more on VLC because this what this is is a VLC stream, a video land stream. Now on your video, I can't show those because I don't have one in you know desktop setup. But uh, it's the same except for it. Uh, does it say video on there? Let me look. Yeah, it's forward slash video, but with no file extension. I had to look. Okay, now, here's the thing they were talking about and I'm talking about here. Now, I'm using some gain because my camera uh, mic with the lapel on it is a little low, a whole lot lower than the SM58. When I get the SM58 to fit to where I want it, you know, I get it all optimal. It's too low, so I there's a gain filter. There's filters in it, so uh, and so I added. I ended up adding 17 dB. That's decibels. So uh, and that's quite a bit actually. Uh, quite a bit of difference there. So anyway, that works pretty well. Uh, there is a perceived loudness thing, you know, because they have such a each one has such a different sound. So keep thinking about okay is that loud enough and well I don't want it too loud because I'm so much closer to the lapel mic I don't want it so loud that whenever I cough it's really really bad well it's already really really bad but like say if I put my head down and I'm closer to the mic which I do quite a lot when I'm moving around that's why I use the mic so I can move around um, I don't want it to get too loud and distort or something okay so now there's more filters you click on uh, the plus and there's compressor the gain that I'm using, noise gate, uh, noise suppression, and uh, video, the video delay async. Okay, so that, let's see, no, it'll add it as soon as I do it, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, you go in, you say okay, and then you set the how much delay you want. Now, that's only, oddly enough, that's only available it says video delay it does there's no nothing in here saying audio delay and actually that's what you need to delay is the audio not the video because <laughs> the, the audio was way ahead of the video but it does work on in this case because this is not actually a video stream it's actually an audio stream so since it's an audio stream I can delay it and I can get them in sync but then that will change after maybe in the very next video it will change and it will actually end up making things worse so <clears throat> make sure I didn't save any of that yeah <clears throat> so I just took it all out I had it set up in uh, every scene that had every, every time audio cam 3 was in a scene I had to go do it. you have to do them separately it won't it doesn't globally you'd think that if you just did it in if you'd like say went to camera three and did it there that it would just globally affect the rest of them but equally but it doesn't work that way each scene is seen is completely separate from each other so um, that like I said that that is a useful feature uh, and it didn't used to say it, it wasn't set up that way before <coughs> um, 
when you before you could do a pl plus or minus now you can only do positive or negative async and now you can only do positive async which is it means delay used to mon see used to in uh well all the way back to uh you know rack mount gear negative was delay and positive was trying to speed it up there's rack mount gear that you will affects units you know rack mount or like my little v amp here if you set something like that up in here you're going to have a positive and negative setting one would be to try to speed that signal up and the other and you can only go so far with that when you do have that feature some of them will only do delay and won't do positive but with audio this is audio we're talking about you can usually try to you can usually have a certain amount of ability to speed it up it might not be much it might be five or ten or twenty milliseconds but it can actually be enough to get your mouth back in sync you know um, or and well with just an audio processor it might be for a different reason to make your effects sound the way you want it to sound but uh, anyway OBS used to be set up with where it it's it set it differently and it it was most more like an effects processor and it made sense to me because that's what I grew up on is uh, you know pro audio gear that's not pro audio gear but <laughs> it's kind of I don't know it, it's it looks like a little guitar but it's a it's a guitar effects unit but it also has vocal effects in it that's why I got it because I knew it would do both and I'm not a good guitar player even though I like to have my guitar behind me there uh, those intros and exits uh, yeah that's me playing with my guitar but uh, that's about as good as I ever got. Uh, so I can't play a song or anything. So, um, 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 back to the, yeah, let's, let's go back to the camera. Um, I just keep turning myself in circles. But yeah, that async, um, delay business, it's not of a, uh, it worked like I said you can get it working I've the last time I did it I spent four to six hours I mean it was forever playing with it and the thing is this can be really tricky because you get close okay I'm almost there so I'll go a little further I'll go a little further and before you know it you've gone so far uh, it's really I don't know how to explain it but I don't I guess I don't know if I made videos. I think I was making test videos when I did it, but I didn't ever publish them or anything. But I mean, it's painstaking and it's tedious, and so I don't know if anybody would ever watch it. But um, you can be. I think I got all the way up. I started with five milliseconds, marked my way up, and I finally started skipping like a hundred at a time. I worked my up way up to like two thousand milliseconds. Finally, I decided I think I've gone too far by the time I got that far. I came, worked my way back, and I ended up at 1,000 milliseconds, which is a second. I went and looked that up to make sure because I couldn't remember. I used to know that stuff. But 1,000 milliseconds is what I had it set on. And that made my wireless mic work. Now, the SM58, that is an analog signal coming through a mixer to the VM into the computer. There's no, there used, I swear there used to be a way to do it. You used to be able to just, uh, am I on the desktop? Go to the desktop. I swear you used to be able to just click this gears here and do it right in here. Oh, wait, filters. <laughs> Maybe I missed it the last time. There it is. No, see, async is not there. And, and I swear I used to, it used to be a way to do that and I used to use it to try to fix you know fix this problem before it's gone you got compressor gain noise gate and noise suppression you have no async no delay you know no latency settings whatever you want to call it um, let's see if there's any other thing advanced audio properties ah now I remember this um oh okay it's in a dear this is the way i remember it i guess i just hadn't gone into there sync offset milliseconds now you can play around in there uh audio cam three okay now that this is the way i used to always do it uh, they they uh maybe they didn't change it up maybe my brain quit working right i, I don't know why i didn't see that uh, 
advanced. You can pick the tracks you want it to be on. You can uh, you can turn monitor on and off. If you don't want to do that, then it'll come through your speakers on your computer, and uh, you'll get horrible. You'll get it in your mic, and you'll get feedback too. But audio cam three, so I can do it from right there. Oh, volume desktop audio is at ninety one. Why is desktop audio at ninety one? It's been working pretty good, so hmm. Wait a minute. When I play videos, they never are loud enough. When I do play a video, like my own or something in there, I don't know if you'd want it on 100%, though. They're okay, but they're not very loud. I think I'll leave it. Now, that must be some default setting, but okay, look at that. I did not know you could do all that in there. i have forgotten. I knew it, and I forgot it. Okay, now here's the offset. This is the thing I was talking about here. Um, am I on a camera or um, on the, I'm on the desktop? So you can add or take away. I don't need it on the desktop. It's good. So I wouldn't want to change a thing there. But yeah, okay. It, it's. I mean, it's not like it's going to be any different, but okay. Let me go ahead and try that right now. I'm on camera one. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually not bad. <laughs> it's like you don't necessarily want to mess with that. It's. I used to try to get everything in sync. Now let's go to camera two. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's not so bad either. Yeah. If it would, this is what those guys were talking about on the forum. Uh, that hasn't been changed then. I was just all mixed up. Um, but I'll go back to here just because it's the only way I can show you. This is what I remembered. I just didn't remember that you had to go to advanced properties. But I could add uh, or positive or negative, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. I can do it to the... Well, I can add a little delay there. This is on the desktop, though, so whatever you see me doing would get off you know and then you can go the other way and actually you would want to go negative if I remember right uh, just try it don't don't follow my instructions obviously I forget everything but you would want to go negative here in order to get delay on your audio and that's what you'd be trying to do in order to sync uh, like I say, if I do it here, now that should be, I don't know if that's global. Yeah, now, see, now I'm seeing audio cam 3 to 1, desktop audio, mic aux, and that says video. But there's actually, oh, there can be video sent along, can there? That's 194. That's this camera. Okay, that's this camera 1. But it's, uh... <coughs> But I'm not sending video over that. You actually can't with IP webcam. Okay, and then what else? Yeah, there's no selections made on the tracks because there's no audio. So it must have been automatic. But audio cam 3, 2, 1. That would be the one I... Well, actually, I'm talking on the SM58. So that would be Mike Ox. So, yeah, I don't know how come the... I wonder um, on that... Is there a global desktop audio setting or... Well, there's, there's sliders in here. There it is. It's been bumped in. I probably hit it with my mouse wheel by accident. And sometimes if you have your, your mouse over in the middle, oh, you didn't see what I did, but uh, I'll have to show you that later. But uh, I think my mouse wheel did that. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I try to keep an eye on that because that can mess up your audio gain settings. So my Cox... Um, to figure out where I would put this so that I can see it. <coughs> and count, do my countdown. One, two, <coughs> three, four, five. It's a bit behind. Okay, so let's see if this will happen in real time. I'm going to go like 10 milliseconds. Negative 10. Okay. Now, I'll put my hand down. One. Two, 
three, four, five. Still behind, still behind, but it might be a little better. Go to 20. One guy was saying he needed about 300 milliseconds. One, two, three, four, five. You don't want to overdo it. That's pretty close. I'm going to go 30 milliseconds. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five. You'll go too far and you won't realize it if you go if you keep going too much at a time. Now I'm not sure if I've already done that. One, two, three, four, five. Doesn't look like I changed it, but I went ten more milliseconds, so I do believe it's real time though. It looks to me like it is. Let's go forty. One, two, three. Four, five. Still looks exactly the same. Okay, so maybe it's not real time. I remember when I got it working before. It was uh, a long time ago when I was when I was using this right here. It was seven milliseconds. Uh, Ten was too much, and seven was good. Or maybe if you click out of that one, uh, that one, and into a different one, it will make it take effect. I just thought of that. One, two, three, four, five. Looks exactly the same. Close this little window and see. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it doesn't seem... It may be that you need to... Well, you shouldn't have to close OBS Studio. To, oh! They said on that, the, the I believe it was an OBS rep or whatever, they said it doesn't show up in the preview. It only shows up in the recording. So, let's see how it is on my preview over here then. Okay, I'll do one. One, two, three, four, five. Now I can watch it back. Yeah, it was a little behind. Okay, it, had, it took me a minute to figure that out. Okay, uh, I'm going to try 20. Now let's try 40, 50. We'll get serious about this. All right. I think I can leave the window open. So, uh, and just if I click in another window, it probably will do it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, it was just one thumb behind. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go 60 or 70. I think I'll go 70 and see. If I get to the point, let's try that. One, two, three, four, five. didn't really show me much change let's go to 90 hopefully this is working like I think it is okay one two three four five that was actually a little closer think we're gonna try a hundred <clears throat> okay one two three four five mm, not sure if it was actually a little closer or not I'm gonna say 110 because it may be just getting closer okay one two three four five that was pretty daggum close let me let me uh do another count one two three four five 
two, three, four, five. I would say I could go another 10 milliseconds. <clears throat> okay, one, two, three, four, five. Now that, it's not consistent though, I don't think. <clears throat> but, um, now this may be global too. I'm not sure. All right, we're going to do a screenshot on that. I'm, if it was global, that would be nice because then I don't have to do it in every stream. Let's look, let's look in here and see. And now I'm on camera two. Look in there and see if. Yeah, it's already in there on the mic aux. Okay, well, let's go to the desktop screen. Let's go to uh, advance. This way you'll see what I'm doing too. And I'll just put it up overall. And that way you won't see all that. Okay, now here's what I did. On the mic aux, I ended up with 120 milliseconds. Now, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and go to the wireless mic. Oh yeah, I have to have it on the camera or else I can't... Uh, I'm going to end up doing uh, the audio cam three, but I'm going to do it from camera one and, ch and then check it in camera two. Well, actually, I should check what I've done in camera two as well. It might have messed it up. Because if that's global, I can't believe I, for I for just got screwed around and forgot how to screw screwed up in my mind and forgot how to do that. So, yeah, let's go to camera two before I go anywhere else and do another countdown with that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. It's a bit different. It's a bit behind, <clears throat> but this might make it close enough to not be horrid. Now let's go back to camera one. I'll do another count. One, two, three, four, five. Not too bad now. Not quite so bad now. Better than I've seen it in a long time. Um, <clears throat> now when I see, yeah, when I ch re when I went from Fedora 23 to Fedora 28, I saved. You can save your profile settings up here. The profile settings you go up there and export them, and I did that and then imported them. But I do remember that some most things got imported. This is in a way newer version. Two or three different, four, five different versions newer is what happened. And most of them did import, but not everything. And so that's where I did lose some of the things I had figured out and got set up. Okay, so let's go back to the camera view and back to the, uh, yeah, I want to get on the wireless the mic now. Wireless mic now. Okay, we're on both. Now okay, we're, we're on both. Mute. Now we're going to mute the SM58. <clears throat> now let's make sure we're on the wireless mic. Okay, now, wireless. <coughs> Still waiting that I hear it. Okay. <coughs> of course, now we lose our <coughs> voice. <coughs> I mean, I don't know if this will last for long, but at least I found this spot in the settings. Now I'm going to click on the um, the gears, go to advanced properties, and this time I'm going to do uh, audio cam three. <clears throat> I'm just going to go straight to 120 and see if that works. Oh, first I should have. Uh, counted it as it is okay one two three four five okay. one, two, three, four, five. 
It's almost right on. So, I don't think I, I better not try to fix that one. <laughs> hmm. So this is making sense as to why uh, the what I tried to do the other way I just showed by doing the async video async delay, but doing it on the one that's only actually audio input. Trying trying to fool it, kind of. Uh, it's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. And uh, I'm gonna close this now and count count that down again. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Now it looks more behind. I don't know. It looks pretty good on the actual live stream. I think they're telling the truth. I don't think they've ever made this preview actually show your your delay when you set it up, and I did not know that it made. It just makes no sense that that wouldn't you know show up. Okay, let's do one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there, there's no need to fix that one <clears throat> right now. Now, I'm, that may be subject to change. Okay, maybe I've uh, temporarily fixed it. Um, if my, now, you know, my SM58's been the real bad one lately. But it's gotten, okay, it's gotten so extreme that that's not the only problem, though. So... Um, if it keeps, like when I start making another video, if it goes back to giving me all that really bad trouble, um, well, I've, I got that one other thing I could try to do, and that's go back and try to set FFmpeg with FLV, but I got a feeling that since it was working it hard, well, I can see now that it was working it hard to make it an MP4, because it's, al it's always done that, uh, if LB Studio has. Uh, actually, well, I've seen it before in other programs, <clears throat> but um, um, yeah, I don't, I, I'm going, willing to bet that changing it to uh, FFmpeg and changing, and if I can change it to FLV, I can only tell that when I'm not recording. It can't get into those settings. I'll look in there after I get off this video. <clears throat> but, um, well, maybe, I, I want to say success, but I know it's temporary, I do, I hate to say that, but, uh, let's get back on the SM58, um, for some reason it's working pretty well right now, and, uh, I, I just keep wanting to check it again, but if I see myself count down one more time, <laughs> I'm gonna slap myself. So, um, um, it's way better now. And uh, let's see. Oh wait, yeah. See, it's not too bad. I mean, there's always that ghosting. They've never been any better than that. And uh, if you change the frame rate, like if I go down to 20. Five, you, you notice a little difference. Go to 20, you notice quite a bit of difference. You go to 15, and it's just really bad. I've done it before, trying to fix all this from the cameras. But I did leave the... Uh, I don't know if I ever changed OBS from 30 to like 15. Uh, I knew that would really mess up my... What's really crazy... But, uh, I'll go into this in a little bit, but it, I, I, it's working really well on the remote, on the on the desktop, not remote desktop. And I don't want to mess that up because that's primarily the kind of videos I do anyway. Um, but I used to use an app called uh, GTK Record My Desktop. Let's see if I even have. I think I have it on here. I haven't used it since I was, uh, hardly at all since I started using OBS Studio. And <clears throat> Get, uh, I was in a hurry. Let's see. I don't know if I have it on here. Let's see. I don't have record my desktop on this machine. Evidently. 
So record it's, it's actually actually record my desktop, which you can just run it in the command line, but that's a pain. So there's GTK and uh, there's two graphic interfaces, and the, they both work pretty much the same, but they have a little bit difference in the settings. Um, can't remember what they're called, but um, anyway, that's what I used to use, and I took me probably a year to realize. I mean, I wanted 30 frames per second, right? Well. I was, you know, I was hard-headed about it because I just knew I could get it because I just thought I could. And uh, well, finally, actually, it was hard to find the information, but finally, I kept searching, you know, on Google, and I found it on the G, you know, Record My Desktop's website. They do have a good, long one-page explanation of help, and uh, I ended up finding it in that very long. It's like about ten pages worth on one page, you know, not maybe maybe five pages, but. Um, it said that try setting your, I tried, you know, I tried 30, 25, 20, 15. I didn't dare. I never even thought about going below 15 frames per second. It's another thing like setting this audio delay. You know, you get to that point where you're not sure which way to go up or down to make it better. Turned out that GTK record my desktop. I don't understand it, how this could work, but it looks perfect if you set it at five frames per second. Or record the app application record my desktop set it at five frames per second with the same well I didn't used to have my mixer uh, and back then I didn't have I don't think I used my VMP I just had my mic I used to run my mic through my cassette deck is what I would do I, I've had this VMP for years but it's actually really complicated to set the thing up you have to follow detailed instructions and my brain just can't do that very well especially when I don't feel well, I can't think straight and you can't just get in there and fiddle around with it I used to do that with the Iraq mount effects units you could do that with them that's how I learned them I spent days hours and week, days fiddling around with them till I learned them but you couldn't do that with this one. You do have to read the well, maybe because my memory's not so good anymore, and I couldn't remember the parents' principles. You know which way, to, which way to go with this and that and everything. But anyway, read the manual on that thing, and and you can get pretty good sound. <clears throat> um, and uh, and the other thing is, back when I first got it, I was running Windows XP, and you can actually hook this thing up to a serial port and control and there's a whole program and you can set it I used to I made my own custom you know settings and everything uh, but I can't do that right now because my virtual XP machine cannot use the, I don't have well I don't have a serial port on this machine that's why it might be able to do it but I can't I don't have one and uh, I don't have XP on my old machine my, my blue FIC is the one I did all that on I, I just have uh, Fedora 21 or 3 or something on there now. 21 I think and I hardly ever turn it on anymore. But um, anyway, you got to have Windows XP to run that program. It's I've been meaning to set something up so that I can do that because I would like to save all this work I've got in here, all these settings. Uh, you save them as a file, and then if anything ever happens, you know you've got them. You can even import them into another one of those machines if you need, wanted to or whatever. But um, I actually feel hopeful I, I've done this before and it works for a little while and then quits working just like they were saying on the forum post but at least right now I can go one two three four five and it's still a little off but <laughs> oh yeah you gotta watch it over there I missed it oh now my stream's red that stream has gone up and down it went all the way off once. Forgot about that. I'm probably gonna need to re-upload. I'm I'm pretty sure I need to upload this video. Let's see. I'm write myself a note because generally I say, oh, maybe I need to do that, and then I don't even remember which video. And I'd have to watch every inch of it to figure that out, you know. One time I, I did figure it all out and, you know, which video. The last time it, I thought I might have to do that, and I watched through that thing, and I found the spot where I had the problem, and it was really not noticeable. When it, and it had shut down and came back up, and it was really not noticeable. So I I don't know, maybe OBS caches until, you know, the connection to YouTube comes back or something and, and actually doesn't lose anything. That's possible. 
Let's see, upload backup stream of um, audio. settings and let's go look at the number I know this is kind of but yeah if I'll do that then <clears throat> yeah video 2018 I thought this said vid in front of it it must be my phone camera videos that have vid prefix 2018 13 12 13 then it has, I think, some random number to I'm trying to write it just exactly how it is. It keeps going between uh, <laughs> underscores and dashes. It's confusing me. My eyes barely can make those out anyway. I can barely tell tell the difference the way my eyes are met, work or don't work. O two. 1442. Yeah, okay, so I'll check that one. 2018, 02, 12, 13. Okay, this is just the 13th now. 02, 14, 42. Okay, I think I got that written down right. Okay, so dropped. red right now still there's something going on i think with uh, internet i think <clears throat> with my isp I'm, well it could be youtube but it's most likely my isp because i rebooted the modem and router before i started the first time this evening and then i did it in my, during my break uh, all the machines all the phones you know i didn't let anything get over overused and uh So, I'm tired. I ate me a, I ate me a power bar, a, a protein bar, <coughs> and it made me able to make this video without having to stop and eat supper. But uh, I'm getting hungry again, so it's exactly what I need to do is just eat supper, I guess. I'm tired anyway. I don't really care to continue anymore. I actually did make some sort of progress, maybe. Um, yeah, I was gonna. I'm too tired to try to write down. I've got a video with full of notes, so I'll have to go through it. Let me see. I like to at the end kind of some if if I notes to self. So let's see. Um, if this doesn't work, then I can always take that. I've got video delay. Video delay. I've got audio delay on the uh, my Cox input the SM58. 120 milliseconds or something like that. I can take that back out if it causes trouble. Now my stream's gone over there. <clears throat> I knew it would probably do that. So I imagine that this one really is going to have to be re-uploaded. I'm going to hit reload and see if anything comes back up. And um, um, I didn't need any. I didn't put any delay in the in the. Wi-Fi, the, the camera three Wi-Fi lapel mic. Yeah, it looks like it came back, and uh, so you know that could that could change. Hitting the wrong place here. Yeah, it came back. Oh, that could change. <clears throat> so um, I'll check. I'll check that. I'll probably try to do my next actual video. Uh, and just see how it goes and then the only other ideas I do have is to try well there's two things I can I can try the FFmpeg with and if, if it'll let me do FLV I can actually see that after I stop this video and I can check that off on my new paper whether or not I can do that uh, okay and then uh, the other thing is I would just have to get drastic on dropping the frames per second on the cameras I'm delayed now, aren't I? One, 
two, three, four, five, which would make sense. I was on this camera and uh, my stream dropped and everything. I don't know how I, it would probably not be much value to look over. The, it's still red. Oh, it's green finally. Anyway, it's all messed up. On The actual stream is all messed up, so it's not going to be much value there. Uh, and checking. But now if I need to remember, try to remember that they say in that OBS form, and it was one of the OBS reps, you know, whoever's answering the questions. Uh, it says the preview does not show in real, they didn't say in real time, but it's a real time preview. The preview does not show your uh, audio delay when you set it. So luckily it dawned on me, well, I've got my live stream over there playing. Let's listen to it. <laughs> so I had enough time. I mean, there's, there's that much delay just naturally in the latency between my computer, YouTube, and back to my other computer that I have enough time to count to five and then unmute that other one and watch and listen to it <clears throat> and see what happened. It's about somewhere around five seconds of delay. Um, and that would just be actual line delay. <laughs> what we used to say in the analog world, line delay. And that's when you use a really long cable to send that signal out and then when, by the, and then send it back and then uh, you know that that gets you to delay there's a famous stories about how the Beatles yeah the Beatles they ran a cable up three two or three stories and back down to their rec control room the recording room to get a delay on some certain song and there's one that I always liked uh, I could be getting the stories mixed up um, but the Led Zeppelin back in the 70s Led Zeppelin got into recording in quad audio and so if you bought a if you had a quad it was quad stereos and quad eight track players for your car or your house but a friend of mine had one for his car his name was Craig and he loved Craig's it was Craig brand stereos and he had a Craig eight track Craig speakers and it was quad core and some of the some of the one of the albums one or two of the Led Zeppelin albums they were brand new at that time um had uh, quad sound and so it would bounce you know they purposely bounced it around so that you could hear it and get it get a kick out of it it sounded cool really cool never heard anything like that before that was surround sound for us so um, uh, and during that doing that album they do some really serious delays on some of the stuff on the drums and they did that might have been the story where they ran the cable they just ran their their snake all the way up two or three stories in this building and happened to be a multi-story building and then back down to the control room that gave them a, a line delay <clears throat> and it sounded really cool you have to know how you know you gotta know what you're doing to do that sort of thing it, it was experimentation and trial and error i've seen some fun videos um let's see if i let's try counting down on two one Two, three, four, five. All right now. Oh yeah, my stream's way behind now. Yeah, it's about all, pretty far behind. Okay, now let's go back because this camera was way behind. Let's see if it catches back up. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it caught back up. about a finger behind <clears throat> whatever that's not a second it's probably about a quarter of a second i'm gonna guess but anyway i'm not gonna try to spew out the milliseconds well 25 milliseconds no yeah no a thousand milliseconds is that's why i didn't want to do that is a second <clears throat> so anyway 250 milliseconds i don't know um so anyway yeah it might have been the that's why I, I kind of don't like to tell those stories because I get them all wrong, but it might have been the Led Zeppelin album where they did that. I think there's one about the Beatles and there's one about Led Zeppelin. and There's diff different ways that they did it. But, but anyway, I remember seeing some uh, some people a few years, about five years ago maybe, got in really into doing that sort of thing, and they would run, uh, they were audio guys, you know, video, audio, video guys. Of course, you know on YouTube, well, everybody that makes videos 
on YouTube is some sort of an audio video guy or girl. They know something about it. <clears throat> well, I mean, you don't have to know a lot these days. You can just buy a nice camera and everything. But anyway, these guys, they were into it. And they were recorders, you know. They were recordists. And they, uh, they were in some sort of warehouse building. And they ran uninsulated wire, solid core wire that was wound. It was round and round and around. And they ran it like 50, 100 feet. And then it made a cool delay, but on top of that, since it was uninsulated and everything, and it was hanging from metal, I, yeah, they weren't insulating it from the metal like different parts of the building and a stairway and all this different stuff. And then they would they would get a, a feedback loop going in it or a sound going in it, and then they would go up there and bump it, and it sounded like a clanging spring. You know, it was, you could basically hear pretty, the same sound you hear when you, when you bounce a, uh, if you've ever played with a uh, slinky, or if you've ever played with wound up wire, when I was a kid, that's what we did. We played with wound up wires and boxes and sticks and knives <laughs> and machetes and oh, yeah, yeah, well I had both. So, uh, and don't throw that thing and try to stick it in the ground end over end because it may hit the handle and bounce up and come back and hit you in the face. I didn't get stitches though, but uh, I tried it again. I was I was really into learning how to throw a knife end over end and have it stick into a tree or something. Well, then I got me a machete and it was dull as all get out. I got it at the Army Navy store, luckily, and uh, it would cut grass uh, and it would cut a green tree somewhat, you know, cut into it. Anyway, I was trying to throw that thing. I'd, uh, not by the hand. Well, machete, you better do it from the handle. Now, a knife, you can do it from the blade or from the handle. It's actually easier to do it from the blade. To get it to flip over end and then land where you want it to land, and I'd do it in the ground, and then as I got better at it, I would throw it at the tree. And if you miss, if you miss the tree, then it's gonna you gotta go real far to pick it up, and it also may damage it because it may hit the concrete or land in the street and get run over by a car. But the machete, I kept throwing it into the ground. Well, they're kind of flexible. It's about you know this long, about two and a half, three feet long. And uh, anyway. I kept trying to throw it in the ground, and in, in it uh, several times the handle hit the ground instead of the blade. And at one time it bounced back up, and I saw it coming, and I jerked over, but something hit me right in the cheek or right here or somewhere. So anyway, don't play with knives and machetes, kids. <clears throat> don't do what I did. Uh, why was I talking about that? I thought we were talking about sound gear. Why do you always distract me like? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, when I was young, you know, in my twenties, even when I was a kid, I did it even more, but when I was in my twenties, I played around with some different things, uh, with sound, but, uh, anyway, I never, never really even thought about stringing out a hundred feet of wire and doing that, but it sounded cool. And it, anyway, it sounded a lot like. If you've ever let a slinky walk down the stairs, I don't know if you can even, I'm sure you can still buy them, but a slinky's like a, oh, just a just a bunch of wound up wire. It's basically a spring, but it's a really loose spring, and you can stretch it out as far as you can reach your arms when you're a kid anyway. And uh, you could get them, you could set it on a step and then, you know, carefully put one end, the other end on the next step, and then it would just start walking down the stairs. That was like their commercial, and that's fun for about five minutes. But um, anyway, you could do that with a slinky if you wanted. You probably wouldn't. You wouldn't get the same sound. But it it's very similar to that sound was what I was trying to say. Uh, only on a huge scale and a different tones that are kind of better, you know. And and what was so interesting to me about it is that they have one end of that wire plug connected to the input of their recorder, right? And then the other end is might be grounded somewhere to the building or something i think it's i don't i'm pretty i'm almost certain i saw that they had to support it along the way and they just had wires you know other wires holding it i don't think they try, had to try to insulate it um you'd be amazed at what can transmit and pick up can be a speaker can be or can be a microphone this is what i'm getting into you'd be amazed at what can be a microphone that's one i hadn't really thought of or tried i never thought about trying to hook up a a slinky to my input on my recorder. What I used to do, uh, I had a TX, so yeah, TX reel-to-reel cassette deck. I have a newer one now. That one, the 
actually, I think I kind of know how I could fix it now. I didn't. I still have it, but I don't know how to get to it, where it is in the garage. But I have a dual TAC that's about 10 or 15 years old now. But that one I had got back in like 1975, 76. Used it until the 80s until it got to where it was wobbling. You know, it was the sound was not the right speed anymore. Then I used to use it for a guitar Im- input for my stereo, and, and I could turn up the. It had a mic input, and so I could turn them up and get distortion. I, so I had guitar. I didn't have a guitar effects unit, so I was, at least had distortion on my guitar. I had a different guitar than one I had when I was a kid. But um, <clears throat> anyway, um, what I used to do is uh, hook up um, speakers. I just figured out at some. Well, I look. I looked at when I was a kid. I looked at. Uh, my real realistic microphones uh, I think actually I took them apart because the wires wore out and broke inside and I took them apart to try to fix them and it looked like a little tiny speaker those did so I thought hey I wonder if you could hook up a speaker like that so I tried it works uh, <laughs> works a treat as uh, <laughs> as all of the, as uh, Dave and all the other Australian guys like to say uh I watch, you know, on YouTube, you get to see people from all over the world making videos, and so I'm learning all these new slang vernacular to say, but it works a treat. And um, the only thing about and it, depending on the size of the speaker, uh, one of the best ones I ever used was about a four or five inch car speaker, a round one, uh, and it makes it sound like you're down in a barrel, but it, it it's basically a parabolic microphone. Uh, it, it uh well I'm, I'm thinking forward now the last time i used one i hooked one up and recorded a sound for a while just for the fun of it i set it on my back porch here at this house of course i grew up in this house but when i when i when i when i had uh, did it a lot is when i had my own home lived out in the country i had a mobile home and i had four speakers to hooked up to my stereo system and they were spread out through the trailer and uh I could. I had made switches. I'm going back and forth, but I put switches, just little toggle switches, to turn them on and off between being speakers or being microphones. And they would either be a speaker. I ran all the wiring so that I could flip a switch, and it would either be uh, an input to the tape deck or an output to the speakers from the stereo. It was really pretty simple to wire up. And so uh, I could turn them one or all of them on. And it was fun, and I used to, at that time, I was teaching Sunday school, and I had the youth group come over to my house, and I, boy, they got a big kick out of that. They were, you know, junior high and high school kids, and uh, <clears throat> there's a little Baptist church down the street, and I, and I got involved there. Anyway, um, this is before I started really, well, I had done some sound for my now ex-wife uh, to sing with sing tracks and stuff, you know, what they call karaoke now, basically. <laughs> But these were sing tracks that had, you know, they were made for singing whatever popular Christian song along with, uh, you know, it was just the music, no vocals. Well, sometimes there'd be backup vocals. Anyway, I did sound for her. That's how I started doing sound. Uh, somebody gave, actually gave her a sound system and a PV XR 800. That's what it had. 150 watt uh, is a console and an amplifier built into one. It had a plate amplifier built into it, a plate reverb, I mean, built into it. And two 150 watt speakers, about uh, 10 or 12 inch, 12 inch, no, 12 or 15, or 15 inch speakers. Yeah, that's when I learned that I wanted 15 inch speakers, nothing less. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I didn't have those at that time though. I was just using my home stereo, it's 1970s home stereo. Uh, actually, it was a combination of mine when I when I was a kid and hers when she was a kid. <laughs> that's what it was. Her speakers and anyway, it was a combination of both of our stereos put together and. Um, so we got a big kick out of that, and uh, you could understand every word. Um, and of course, generally, well, I would turn it on and and record the kids just sitting there, you know, not tell them I turned it on. And then uh, I did it with my children before I ever started, you know, when they were little, before I ever started doing it. I had it set up that way for years uh, before I ever did it with. I never didn't think about doing it with the youth group for a long time, but after they'd been coming over every, I had them come over every Friday night called it youth parties and you know all the kids that would kids that would never ever come to church or sunday school would come over to my house and hang out and then so you know we uh talked to them about the lord in there that way and um 
Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, we uh, got to playing with that one time, and then they kept wanting me to do it again, you know. So um, we ended up sitting around just making recordings. And, and see, when you got a whole, like, five or ten kids, well, you can't really pass that one little microphone around to all of them. But you can, when the way I had it set up, um, you could sit there and just record everybody, whatever they said in that room. And like I said, it sounded kind of like you were down in a barrel, but it was very, uh, very clear and very easy to understand what everybody, everyone was saying. Or you could turn it on, like I said, all through the house. But if you did that, then all the noise anybody was making in the rest of the house would, you know, just clutter up what you, what everybody was saying. So generally, I didn't turn on the whole house because it just make too much noise. <clears throat> and um, well, it was easy to control whether or not you'd have feedback by the inputs on my TX set deck because uh, it had manual. You know, it had. Uh, didn't have automatic level control at all it was manual so i just knew how to set it <laughs> it right it was stereo right and left so you know pretty cool so um then later after i'm older and I, my health got bad and i was already divorced and i can move back in here uh this was one during the years when i was doing sound for bands and stuff and actually i had already made some recordings of my own see i ended up recording some writing and singing and recording some two albums over the years and i was i was in the i was actually uh i had actually bought me a i had found a camera i had found, i had been my friends that did had a sound company took me to an auction audio video auction at a big sound company in dallas they were selling off old gear i ended up buying a sony bvp3 studio camera that when it was new was ten twelve thousand dollars for 350 bucks and uh cause it was, you know it was still a great camera 700 it was a tube camera 750 lines of resolution which was still great in 1998 or so when i got it uh, it was it was tube camera not there were some you know one two and three chip tube cameras that people that semi-pro you know prosumer cameras that people were using some of my friends had them one of my one of my friends had them but uh it was pretty cool and i used it for two or three years and then i ended up one needing some money and i sold it <laughs> i sold it i put it online and sold it ended up selling it for 1500 bucks so it was still worth some money <clears throat> and so i really got that's the only time i went to an auction and did good i got some other stuff well actually i had that sony and i had a what was the other one it was either, I think the other, I had, I got two of them. The other one didn't even know if it worked, and I paid like 15 bucks for it or something, or 25 bucks. It did work. It needed some adjustments. I took it, somebody told me about a camera store to take it to in Dallas, and I got it adjusted. And I, and uh, it was, I think it was a JVC, but anyway, I should have kept it, but I thought, well, I don't need two of them. And I wanted to make some money. And the guy said, well, I'm going to sell it for you on like consignment. And he sold it for like, 350 bucks or something and i got like 150 so after i did that i was like man i should have kept that <laughs> so uh, and actually a few years later when i sold my there was really not that much difference in the two cameras just the brand probably could have got 1500 bucks for it a couple of years later so anyway maybe not i don't think it was quite uh, that camera was worth quite as much as the one i kept but uh okay so i was trying to make me a music video for one of my songs i had recorded and so i was playing i actually was using a little realistic six channel mixer or something about the size of this that my one of my friends had let me borrow and to get it into the bcr recorder and the camera i didn't have a real uh, three-quarter inch. well i had it well i had i ended up with two three-quarter inch desktops two or three of them two of them were one of them worked i had three of them i think they're still in the garage three quarter inch professional recording decks but i didn't have one thing they weighed like almost 100 pounds couldn't just carry them around uh, but i didn't have the cables to go from the camera to the decks and i didn't want to and I didn't really want to spend the money for them because they were big and heavy but i did have a portable deck that used a different size a mini three quarter inch it was only do like 30 minutes 25 or 30 minutes of video so sort of like hour and a half or two hours <coughs> that's the one i <coughs> wanted to get going uh, i never did get a cable for it that guy at that store that 
camera repair store in Dallas City had make me one, but I didn't do it at the time. Should have just went ahead and done it. But I uh, ended up, when I sold the camera, I went ahead and just gave that little deck to the guy that bought it because he was nice. He was a, it, it was really crazy because the guy that ended up buying it was a guy that ran a cable TV studio in Old Mexico. And I didn't know if it was going to be on the up and up at first, but it turned out it was. He couldn't speak a word of English. He had a secretary who could speak just three or four words of English here and there. But if I, you know, and then they started writing me. So I, I couldn't really understand them on the phone, and they couldn't understand me. He tried to talk to me, and he couldn't. You know, I couldn't talk to him. He couldn't talk to me. I couldn't understand the secretary when she called. And so finally, I guess I dawned on me because they had emailed me first, and they somebody there could write enough English that I knew what they were saying. So now that I knew they were real people and stuff like that, I thought okay, because they wanted me to ship it. Well, they didn't ask. It, well, it turned out they didn't, they didn't, uh, I shipped it to South Texas and they had somebody pick it up there and take it to Mexico, I believe is what happened. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> anyway, I got my money and he wrote me back and said, thank, he was really happy with the camera and thanked me for, you know, get, just throwing in that little portable deck. Cause he thought he, you know, I thought he might get some use out of it. And uh, because down there at that time, they were still using those. You know, they weren't, I guess they didn't, you know. Well, actually, at that time, I had been, I was saying earlier, I'd been volunteering in some cable TV shows. That's the kind of cameras that we're using in the cable TV shows, uh, public access cable TV shows. Uh, There's a thing in here, I don't know if it's in Texas or just, just Texas or the whole U.S., but every cable TV channel has to have a public access by law uh, studio that the public can use. You just have to go and sign up, and you and usually you take a little classes. I took a class to run the cameras and stuff. And all of us did that. We we made a couple little shows, and we took classes. They showed us how to use the cameras, and I think I did that. Yeah, I did that before I bought my camera, so I already knew how to run it, and I knew what a what a cool camera it was. So that's why I bought it. So, um, hey, I'd already done that ahead of time. So, anyway, I knew that, but but evidently, he wasn't a pub. He wasn't doing a public access show. He was doing the real TV shows, you know, down there in Mexico. So, anyway, I'm telling long stories. But um, I was using that camera, my camera, to make that video. And I, what I did was I got my little... Uh, Probably, I don't know what I, a tape deck of some sort and played it. Uh, actually, I played it through the mixer into the VCR to record the audio into the VCR tape. And at the same time, I have the uh, video feed. The way you could do it, there was a test output on those expensive cameras that's just an RF cable. It's just a video feed. That's, and you can just plug that straight into a VCR. That's how I recorded stuff with that camera. And it would do camera uh, videotape. VCRs would only do like, the best ones would only do like 450 uh, lines per second, something like that. And uh, SVHS, which I have one now, would do 650, something like, or some maybe, yeah, 650, I think, 6650. And that camera would do 750 lines of resolution. That's how you measured analog cameras. <clears throat> uh, they didn't measure it by all this stuff they do now. And, uh, so uh, I had a plan, you know, I had it all figured out in my head. And, and so I had things laid out in the backyard and uh, I tried to film along with the music and keep it flowing and we're trying to make a cool video. And uh, I was, you know, I couldn't really be in it because I was a cameraman. But then I did do one thing. I turned the camera and put it on. I had a tripod that that same friend let me borrow, put it on the tripod and I was sitting in a lawn chair in front of the camera in the backyard I wish I had that video I would show it and I was acting goofy and I kind of leaned back in the chair and it flipped all it clo- it folded up and I landed on my back with my feet up in the air <laughs> so, <laughs> so I uh, and it wasn't part of the music video but I decided I would probably add that on at the end as a funny little thing I actually never went back and edited that footage. That's one of the, I, 
I've seen that a million times. That's why I do live videos. I've got so much footage that I've never edited because turns out I guess I don't like it too well. I thought I wanted to have a job as a video editor, and I did get a job in a video editing shop, but where people edit their own videos for a while, just a few months. Uh, <clears throat> they actually was said they were going to make me the manager, and then I guess I didn't do what they liked, and they went and brought someone else in but didn't tell me that they were going to make him the manager, and then when they did, I said, oh, okay, that's how you are, so I quit. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't paying nothing anyway. So, um, it's one of the, you know, it's the only job I ever quit. It was always like laid off because of, you know, slow business, you know, uh, or else I stayed there. <laughs> no, I guess I did quit. Let's see. No, the cabinet shop ran out of business and then I got another job at General Dynamics and made a whole lot more money and worked there from, went between there and the cabinet shop for the, from throughout the 80s until 1992 but anyway um, so I made that video and it just reminds me that's a video I'd still love to edit but it's on v VHS tape I don't think I've ever even digitized it yeah should before that tape dies because they they don't last forever even in the house and it's in the house in the right there in the closet behind me the one that's open it's in there somewhere um, I still have a card that well it's an old one but have a card I have two ways I could digitize it but uh, I could have just plugged it I never did it I don't know why but I could have I went up when my uh, see I have a uh, DVD recorder with a with a digital tuner in it uh, uh, it's a DVD recorder yeah no no VHS in it or anything but you can plug a uh, well, my S video deck, I can plug that S video. It's plugged into it, the S VHS deck. You can plug it in there. And uh, I could record it, you know. It it's, uh, doesn't have any restrictions or anything where you can't do that, you know. Uh, only thing is the DVD deck quit working several years ago. And the tuner still works. And I just use it as an input to the TV, that and the VHS deck, the S VHS, S Super VHS deck <clears throat> that I got later on, way after what I, story I'm telling, years later. But uh, <coughs> um, S Super VHS X will play standard VHS or Super VHS, which is, if you've ever heard of High Eight, it's about the same quality. I think a little high, little higher quality than High Eight. Actually, High Eight was a big popular thing. It was a smaller size tape, and then it kind of fell out of popularity, and they quit making the cameras and the players and everything. I think they actually still might make SVHS decks, but uh, yeah, they do, I think. Anyway, uh, during the time, boy, I, I'll get there. It may be a week, but I'll get there. During the time I'm making that video, I decided to start playing with that four inch or five inch car speaker <coughs> and recording sound um, off of it because where, where I live, the backyard looks into the backyard of another house, and then that house is on the service road to the freeway. Or, well, it's Jacksboro Highway, well known here in this area. It's not a like a, well, actually I was start to say not a fast freeway. It's not a city freeway. It's a rural freeway. Now, kind of, we're not in the country anymore because so many people live out here now. But. Um, when I was a kid, I drove 110 miles an hour on the way to school every morning on that road. Now, people, you, there's too much traffic. Nobody can do that anymore, hardly, unless it's like one of those one of those crotch rocket motorcycles that uh, people keep getting killed on, you know. <laughs> They'll do it because they can weave in and out of everything. But you ain't going to, you, there ain't too many cars fast enough to get up to 110 between running into the back of another car. Now there's just so many cars, you know. I mean, like, you know, there's two lanes going each way, so... You know, these people are going to cut y'all. But we used to, we used to top, when I was in high school in 1975, in 1973 to 5, we uh, we used to top in race out there. And you could get, I would leave this house and get up to, well, you could always go 90. You could make every curve at 90 in a, whatever car I had. Uh, it looks like my OBS had disconnected and reconnected again. Oh, well, you know. <clears throat> um, I've given up on that string. It's, it's ruined. But um, anyway, I could get up the car. My first car, it, the max it would do is 110. 
I can get up to 110 and stay to 110 to the last turn before Lake Worth, and then I'd have to slow down to 90 to make that turn. And that thing, you could hear those tires squealing just like on TV. That's not a good thing. That means you're just that close to losing it and uh, no telling what happened. So I'd rolling, up, rolling uh, probably like that, not in over in. But uh, <clears throat> then I got a 64 Chevelle, but I only had a six-cylinder, and then I had a guy put a 350 in it. And I couldn't top it out. It was, I, I know, I got 120 lots of times. 100, well, actually, maybe I did top. Yeah, I topped it out. It on the speed armor only went to 120, and where it went to, I estimated to be 125, 126. I always wanted to say 126. I don't know why. It, I could top that car out. But then I, later, when I was grown, I had a 70 SS Chevelle with a 402 big block. That car, I could not top out because. It had a lot left at 125 or so. It's same thing. It went up to 120, and uh, at uh, at about 125, that front end was getting so I could see the front end. You know, the so I could, I could almost see the headlights. You know, it was getting scary. So I always let off and I ch- chickened out. But it, I think that's the reason I'm still alive. <laughs> so. I tried it several times in different long stretches of freeway. And so anyway, uh, scatterbrain. <clears throat> um, yeah, I used to love going fast and hot rodding and drag racing and all that. I never did get into real organized racing. I just did it on the street. I wanted to. But, uh, yeah, you can use a car. You can use any kind of speaker. It, it, the only thing is if it's too big of a speaker with a real big magnet on it, it may not vibrate enough by the normal movement of air. That's what makes it cause it to pick up, you know, it's the vibration. Just like when it's playing sound, the vibrations make the sound well. And as a mic, it needs to be like the better, like a little car speaker or even one out of an old stereo that's doesn't really even have, if it has a magnet, it's like the size of the end of your thumb, you know. I think some of them don't actually have magnets in them. I've got some from the 50s and stuff. And some of those ones... From the this one in the car speaker wasn't one with a big heavy magnet. It was a very small magnet. It was a cheap, really cheap one. So actually, for make for doing a using a speaker as a microphone, the lighter you know, the, the easier it is to move the paper. The easier it is for the sound vibrations to move the paper, the better it'll pick up. If you have a big, like say, a 15 inch speaker with a big old magnet on it, it probably won't pick up hardly anything except for super loud noises. And then, uh, let's see, what else have I used? Oh, this was something I learned when I was a kid, my first guitar. This only worked back then, I think. Uh, but the fo- something about the phone speakers in your regular standard house phone. Uh, <clears throat> you could lay that. I just, I, one day I laid it down, and I was talking to somebody on the phone, I laid it down close to the guitar. I'd been playing with my guitar, and it picked it up. And we came over, came over the, uh, amplifier perfectly it's a little funny sounding but it, you could under, you know so anyway i learned you could sit you could just set the phone over you know the, the speaker the one you're listening to over the um over the pickup coils just set it on the strings over the pickup coils you got a speaker phone now in order for them to hear you you got to get your face down there <laughs> talk to the, the the pickup speaker but i used to get a kick out of doing that um I didn't uh, really don't remember ever. Well, you couldn't record. You well, I guess you could have recorded that way if I'd have had the right cables, but didn't have any. Well, I don't think the guitar amp. It was an electric guitar, by the way, with electric guitar amp. I don't think it had an output, or if it had one that wasn't wired or something. I remember it had been redone and changed up. <clears throat> uh, it was a used one, you know. My mom got me brand new guitar. Well, no, I bought the guitar. I saved up for it, but she bought me the amp for Christmas. So you, you know, like right after that. But, uh, yeah, she put up with a lot of noise. She also bought me a drum kit. <laughs> she was pretty cool. But, uh, no, I didn't ever learn to be good at either one. Uh, I played ma- played and made played with them and made lots of noise. But um, yeah, that was one of the first things that I thought was really cool, and I learned that by accident. And uh, And what was cool about it is... Okay, if you just stick a microphone up to, uh, you know, the phone and play it through a speaker, then it's really hard to do that without getting feedback. 
later on, especially I remember I tried it with my, I used to plug in, you know, use my realistic cassette or reel to reel decks. I had reel to reel decks, two of them before I got a cassette deck, before cassette decks came out. And, um, well, I've been into recording audio ever since I was a little bit of kid. And um, anyway, you stick your little mic up to the phone. Yeah, it'll pick it up. And then if you, and what I would do is plug a, a speaker, one that I took out of an old, st- well, I had one I took out of an old stereo that I made a speaker box for and uh, did that in first year of high school, I think. But anyway, be- anyway, whatever speaker I was playing with, uh, plug it in back then those had a high enough output on the earphone you know enough voltage to run a a light a regular an old 50s or 60s stereo speaker it would run them they didn't need a lot of wattage like these newer speakers do and uh so uh you know you could you could listen to it real time but of course it would feed back real easy uh those record well like my cassette deck didn't it was an automatic level control uh well there might have been a gain input but anyway it was real tricky uh, and if the person moved in the wrong place, it would cause it to feedback and all that stuff. Um, it was fun. But then a- after I was grown, I thought, oh, well, I, I was talking about getting that PV. My, someone gave my wife at the time an XR800, PVXR800 record, you know, mixing board speakers uh, set up. Well, I, once I got that to play with, then uh, and I did the sound for, you know, or, I mean, I, I, I didn't know I'd never used a real mixer like that before, but I learned and I actually went to a PV store and they taught me a bunch of stuff. They would do classes, but uh, I don't know if I ever made it to the classes, but uh, I think I did once. But they told me a lot. Me just going up there and well, one time that plate reverb, well the, the amplifier in it actually went out and I had to buy another one. I had to take well I had to take it to them and have them fix it because I didn't know how to do that back then. And uh, anyway, they were they were very helpful back. Those guys were, <clears throat> but. Um, um, I tried the guitar, you know, the, the laying the phone on the guitar. I still had that guitar. So I tried hooking all that up and laying the phone on the guitar, uh, to pick up the phone and it had changed something and, and it didn't work. It wouldn't pick it up at all. The guitar pickup, same guitar pick that I used when I, that I was a kid didn't pick it up. I, I still, to this day, don't know. I, I don't know how I would find out. I've watched a lot of electronics videos, but that guitar made back in the 60s had a what's a pretty, considered a pretty standard guitar pickup. I don't I don't think that design has changed, so I don't think it was that. But there was something in the phone speaker, the one that you stick to your ear and listen to, that it would be picked up by the guitar pickup. But, um, of course, the guitar pickup won't pick up a human voice. That was what was cool about that is that you would hear the the uh the amplifier your guitar and then the amplifier would only pick up the phone voice on the phone so it was basically a phone tap and what was cool about it is it you didn't have you could turn it up as loud as you wanted almost without you could turn it up really really loud without getting feedback i mean if you turn it up real loud i'm sure it would end up feeding back to them to those people there it wouldn't feed back to you but it would to them to the people on the phone but uh, I don't remember, honestly, exactly what you could do with it. But I just remember you could turn it up really loud without any problems. Uh, so then I tried it again later. And, uh, yeah, I remember I could not. It would not work. They had changed those. And I didn't have any old phone that was working. You know, the phones looked, well, they looked quite a bit different. They, and instead of being dial phones, they were touch tone. And they had done something with the speaker, the, the ear earpiece speaker. And it wouldn't. The guitar, that same guitar, wouldn't pick that that one up in the '80s, from between the '60s and the '80s. <clears throat> and uh, so then I started playing around with my microphones. I didn't have SM58s. I didn't. Well, I, I mean, I knew that what they looked like. I'd seen them on TV and everywhere else. But that's what this is right here. But I didn't know about them. And I had went to uh, well a different music store. The one that was the PV store was way over in Fort Worth, about 35 miles from my house. I lived out in the country in Hazel. And uh, between Hazel and Weatherford, and there was another one over in Fort Worth, closer to River Oaks, where I was actually born and where I lived until we about fourth grade. Uh, there were some real nice older fellows. It was like a you know home owned store. You know, two brothers that ran this store. They taught me stuff about microphones, and uh, 
I didn't have a snake, and they, I remember them. I think I remember them talking about it. Did you want to get a snake? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it costs quite a bit of money, you know. And uh, so what I would do is I got what I ended, what I started out with is I bought. There's high. This is a low impedance microphone. Now they are the quietest microphones, and you can run that cable longer than a high impedance microphone without losing signal. But there's one thing about a high impedance microphone if you get a high quality one. And I bought a couple of high quality microphones from them that were high impedance and uh <clears throat> that you could only you couldn't go more than I think 20 25 feet. Uh, well, maybe a little more than that because on the cable. So I just used my cables but straight to the mixer, you know. So I couldn't be real far in the back. I didn't have a snake is a long cable that gives you, you know, 50 feet to 150 feet. Generally, you go between 50 and 150 feet on on your snake, how long you have it and how far back you get from the stage or wherever they're standing to sing or speak or whatever. Well, I had to be what I would do is get about 10 feet from the stage over to the right usually. Uh, or well usually it was some sort of stage if it was a church or like one time she did some singing at this little local some kind of thing for the school for the little kids you know the elementary school I remember sitting up in there and um, um, anyway my cables they had to have been maybe you could go 50 feet was the max on the high impedance it had to be at least that long because 25 feet wouldn't have made it so I imagine it must have been 50 feet anyway I bought two high impedance microphones and the cables to go with them as long as I could get without losing the signal and, and, you know, being too weak to be of any use. And you could, the thing about them was, especially since I was new to mixing sound and everything, is you could turn, you could gain them about almost twice as much as a low impedance mic without getting any feedback. Not twice, probably another, you know, a whole lot more. Noticeably different. I don't know how to say it. And so, and a lot of people would comment on that. How come you can do that? You know, and I would explain it to them. And they thought I was smart, but I had just learned that one little thing. I didn't really know all the rest that I've, now all the things that I've learned since then. I'm like, wow, I didn't know nothing. But, and I didn't think I knew a lot. I tried to explain that these nice fellows taught me that. But um, anyway, um, I don't still have those marks because, well, when we got divorced, it was her sound system. I let her keep it, so she ended up selling it. Uh, <clears throat> but um, it was a pretty cool little sound system. Um, but um, I have never gotten another high impedance mic. I, you know, not any, anything that except for something that little cheap little thing that came with something. You know, but I've never gotten another one. And these were cardioid mics. You know, like like an SM58. They weren't. Uh, uh, condenser mics and uh, <coughs> so they had they were good at uh, blocking out background noise and everything they were good stage mics but uh, we got a lot of use out of those things um, and I never did buy a snake for that thing I, I, I re once I learned about all that I wanted to do that but uh, never did uh, but anyway um, um, I went blank um, I don't know why I'm talking about all this anyway right now. It's got nothing to do with... Well, it has. it's audio and video. At least it's related. It's not hot rods and stuff. <clears throat> but... Um, one, two, three, four, five. I think I've actually made some difference. That, so. Let's see. No. It's not absolutely horrible, at least. Now, I've been sitting here jabbering on on this camera. See, that's what's kind of weird. It's not that the longer the stream, the more it degrades kind of thing. It's some weird, random thing. That, that's why I'm saying it's so hard to pin down what it is. And it's, as I saw on the Internet, everybody else is banging their heads against the wall trying to figure out what it is. Uh, I think I already knew what it was before I tried you know. I think it has absolutely everything to do with the differences in the uh, <clears throat> speeds of the, uh, I was just thinking I can show that app. I have my endoscope up and going, don't I? Let me see, is it up and going? 
I may do that. I need. I just need to quit fiddling here. But uh, <clears throat> let's. Let me do it. I'm gonna get my endoscope and bring it over here. I did all that hard work to fix it, and I haven't used it. I'm losing my mic here, moving it, but uh, I'm banging into it too. Okay, so. Um, See, which one do I want to get? I was going to get the uh, one in the bag, and then I thought maybe I should get that one up there. <coughs> um, the timing went off on it again, didn't it? Yeah, I'll get the one in the in the bag here, the one that's uh, get my lapel off, get it. <coughs> Okay, now, get this thing out of here. It's still serving up the audio, but I'm not using it right now, so it be fine. Okay, so it's, uh, it's easier to get down here and get it under the camera than this other one. All right, Let's see if we can wake it up. Okay, um, yeah, I'll just go to the endoscope. <clears throat> yeah, you won't get you won't get to the joy of seeing me. <laughs> what I get finished taking the camera bag off and all that stuff because now it's all gone. Okay, so uh, will it go sideways? It won't go sideways unless I. What are we looking at here, screen wise? Okay, I'm going to move my, give myself some more room to move stuff around. Yeah, that light's no good, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, there's that new battery app. I like that app. I, if I have, can, don't run out of room on these things, I may leave it on there. Okay, that's what it is. It's in a weird place. So I want, uh, now it has turned a little bit from when I spin it around and got it on the desk, but it's still usable. I'm having to turn it quite a bit, about 70 degrees or something, but it's not bad. <clears throat> it's not going to be uh, un untwistable, that's for sure. And I could probably, uh, yeah, I could straighten it out a little by doing that. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. It's not what I expected it to do. I guess it needs to go th the other way. I hit things on the phone. There we go. Let's see. Oops. Well, the way I had it was better. Okay. Okay. Uh, forgot what I was looking for. Oh, the... Uh, oh. This one's all messed up, and I can't... Every time I fix it, it just goes back to being messed up again. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm looking for the Wi-Fi app. Wi-Fi Finder. That's what it is. Yeah, SSH droid. See, I, oh, well, that, that's a different thing. That I can turn that on and I can connect with SFTP and copy and files and stuff. But when I try to do back video backups or anything, uh, anything over, anything three gigabytes or bigger, well, you generally fail. I don't know why. It just works away at it and then fails. There it is, Wi Fi Finder. So I still end up having to take the SD cards out and put them in the. Uh, Oh, well, that way's probably better. Let's see, did it go away? I think I somehow closed the app. Let's try one more time. I didn't even think I touched the front of it. Oh, there it is. There. So you need to turn it so that you can read that graph. It's all narrow like that. You can't read it at all. And you got to stand it up to get it to. There we go. Now, what do we got? Oh, the last time I looked at this, 
my um see i told you i told you in the other video i thought i was down on around channel three that's one two three i'm on channel one it's automatic i never did you know i don't know if the d-link if you can set the channels i don't think you can i think it's automatic i wonder if this has got anything to do with my problem <laughs> okay but see uh D-Link guest, the yellow one, and the one behind it is my my standard there, D-Link, Don's D-Link, 2.4 gigahertz. Now see how the D-Link guest is going up and down like that? And there's one called Star Blazers that's been here in the neighborhood forever. Uh, it's down there on those channels. Uh, but the other day, my when I opened this up, I was down here. I was up here on around channel 11. But you see, it's more busy. I purposely thought I had set it down here to get out of the busy area because there's only one down there. Uh, <clears throat> but see, these come up and down, up and down, up and down constantly. So this is why I get the idea that that's what's happening. Okay, what you see happening to the Wi-Fi signals, that's what's happening to the speed of my video stream uh, and the audio too, but it's not as... Uh, and the measurements are actually a signal. They're actually, what are they? I think they actually use dB as the measurement for radio signals. I can't remember. As well as audio. Uh, it doesn't say, but I think it is. Anyway, um, <coughs> um, went to sleep. Oh, it's not on battery. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not plugged in. Um, but you can sit there and watch that. And uh, now my main one generally doesn't go down much. It'll usually go down like to 40 or something. Um, but the other day when I looked at this right here, I was down here. I was way up there on channel 11. So this this router is is changing the freq the uh, channels automatically, trying to you know pick the best spot. But whatever, as long as, uh, and that hasn't, what's really crazy is I used to have to set a, a hard channel set to get my Wi-Fi repeater to work in the garage. <coughs> but it was working. I mean, it's not even on right now. But uh, there's a new one, extra one down there. Everybody else is learning. Uh, maybe they're, I imagine these routers are doing the same thing. They're doing it automatically. So they just keep, they're following each other around, fighting each other, and then moving away. And it's kind of like a sparring match, you know, they're, punching and jabbing and moving backwards and forwards and and trying to uh, trying to keep away from each other but see now that star blazers is coming up now even though that's not super strong that's enough to cause some interference and uh, I think that I think that the ones that are way on down there you know 80 90 say especially under 90 or 90 between 80 and 90 well I don't know honestly but i would think 90 and below wouldn't really hurt but when it gets up to 80 and above um i i do know this when the ones that are like say halfway up 60 50 if i'm on that same channel as them and i move to another channel i'll get a better speed test so um got to go to sleep again so um and these are really weak right now i don't know why if it's Maybe because they're not in use, everybody's asleep, you know, it's 4.28 a.m. Uh, they may, uh, a lot of the routers are, you know, smarter now. They try to, uh, well, they, they go to sleep as to not use as much power. And uh, and then when you're in use, then they, they give out more power, more radio signal strength to try to get you a better signal. So, um probably, I guarantee you in, in the daytime, they those things would, uh, Two, about th two or three of these will jump up just as high as mine. Sometimes, well, they used to, I used to, we all used to be right in the middle until I started learning, <laughs> until I got this, these phones and started learning. I knew about this and I used to just try to guess. Well, I read articles that said generally people don't use, or most routers are default. What I had to go by is all I had to go by was most routers default to, you know, whatever, probably around in the middle. I don't remember now. Um, say around channel six so i would move yeah and so i would move generally i think they actually said that at the higher frequencies the uh, you know up here around channel 10 11 and 12 well now i can't remember 
there's one end of the spectrum you get a faster speed and one end of the spectrum you could go further but get a slower speed so um, well I kind of want I want as best best as I can get I want to go as far as I can uh, well until I get my nice strong repeater out there in the garage but um, and it won't matter as much but the speed is really important you know because even if you're not using all that speed uh, the more data you send let's say you've got the capability of if you got a capability for more speed you've got the capability for more data without it fluctuating you know um, and video was a lot of data I went to sleep <sighs> oh yeah that's smart to show that well you're not coming to my house are you and I don't leave the house, so I try to not show that, though. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, probably shown that 50 times and don't even remember. Okay, um, so this is what I'm always talking about. This is where I get my ideas about my uh, why, how much my Wi-Fi speed is fluctuating and how come my video fluctuates so much. And See, here we go. We got... Okay, sometimes the video is on slow motion. I keep saying that it's in slow motion. Well, yeah, because um, because of fluctuations in how much data can go through at any given millisecond, really, at any given time through your wife, through my Wi-Fi. And then the audio, of course, is a whole lot less data. So now, see now, the most, that D-Link guest go, drops down for some reason, drops down all the way to 50 there, and my D, you know, now it went right back up. Um, that is that's the guest account on the D-Link router is what it is and then the one that's red that's the main account and then this also has a 5 uh, five gigahertz but it doesn't register in this app well I think it doesn't register in this app because this phone doesn't have a 5 gigahertz chip in it I think it's why only thing, oddly enough the only thing I have with that, that will connect to 5 gigahertz is that old Dell 6000 laptop it's several years older than the Dell 1525. It doesn't have a 5 gigahertz chip in it. <coughs> and I'll take that back. Now we got that new tablet. I think it'll do that. That 10 inch tablet. <coughs> that 10 inch tablet. But, um, yeah, I thought I would show that. So, let's get out of there. Uh, and, uh, Trying to figure out where to set this stuff. I'll end up needing this mic now that I'm taking it off. But I'll just leave it up there. I didn't ever turn off the radio. Yeah, that's a heck of a lot better, though. Now at least my, you know, my close-up. Uh, and, and see, I can raise that up and down. I got it at the closest. The reason I didn't ever have this thing uh, tied real tight right here. Now it's be delayed like crazy. Um, okay, we'll try showing it on cam too. The reason I didn't have even try to tie this tight, I mean, I knew I had zip ties, right? The reason I didn't try this before is because I was always needing to slide this cable up and down to get this closer. But I do have another four to five, six inches, about six inches that I can raise it up. So I thought, you know what? I could live with It's drove me crazy for all this time. I used to just fight the cable, but I get I just get mad at it now. So um, I don't even want to do it anymore. So you know, let's turn this around. Okay, so uh, yeah, I never t put anything really tight on here to hold it from going up and down because I wanted to be able to go up and down. But um, I can go up and down with this. It's kind of hard to move, so I won't do it. But you can see all this sticking down here. That's how much more it can go. So I've got quite a bit of adjustment. And... Uh, like right now, that's just right for the phone. I set it to the best height for the text on the phone, the general average size text on the phone. And cause, uh, and then if I'm doing paper and, and it's a little too far away, I can pick it up. Or or if I need to, if it's you know, like something else and I need more space, then I can I can raise it up. Sometimes I'm doing objects, you know that, and uh, objects that. Uh, 
you know, I'm working on something. Like the last time I was doing my belt, I was repairing my belt, and I was using it to see because I couldn't see to sew it. I was sewing my belt. So on the buckles back on my belt. So, yeah, before I give up here, uh, since I'm talking about something that actually pertinent to all this now, something that hit me. Um, I was going to say, I was looking at the time on my stream. Oh, it's not as long as I thought. Okay, good. So, uh, <clears throat> I've been making videos for probably almost five hours, but I took a break. So, so I've got two, two hours and probably 30 minute videos. So what I was going to do is go to my uh, router. Okay, now, and go more into what I was talking about. Uh, the settings. I want to know. I, I don't remember what the, you know what it is, it is on the uh, <clears throat> what the settings allow. I was going to say I thought I saw something about. I have to be careful about what I click on because. One of them shows my password. Um, well, as I was logging in, I swear I saw the these the wireless speeds and stuff. Settings, features. Statistics. There's wireless, but I think that might have passwords in it, too. <clears throat> Pretty sure it's that one in the middle that has the passwords in it. It'll just show all the passwords right there. Yeah, this one is connected clients. That just shows all the connected clients. Well, it does. I think it'll show what difference between wireless and wired. No, I guess it doesn't. So, um, well, yeah, there we go. It has a little the little wireless bars if they're wireless. So, uh, what was my point? <clears throat> Seeds. System log. Let's see what's in there. Anything? Oh, I don't have it enabled. Okay, so you can even have an email you about things. That could actually be good. Uh, statistics. Let's see if that tells me anything. Okay, there we go. Now, if you sit and watch this, you could see. There it is. Wi-Fi five gigahertz. Wi-Fi two point four gigahertz. LAN internet. Okay, so you. Of course, like I said, I'm not good at math but you could sit here and you might get an idea of what's going on uh, of course the graph okay here we go zero kilobits to 600 kilobits for how long a second a millisecond <laughs> what uh, okay this is kilobits a second well that doesn't go very high does it 600 kilobits a second um, but okay, so right here, cent kilobytes. Well, no, it's kilo. Well, that says k bytes. It doesn't say kilobits. It should be kilobits, shouldn't it? Or data is. Oh, well, it's talking about data. Okay, it's talking about data, not speed. Like kilobits is for your speed of your internet and, and networking. And then kilo, kilobytes is data, actual data. So sent and received. So it's working. See, it's busy. This is the routers, what it's doing. It's not my internet. Well, it's actually different. What are we looking at? Oh, we're looking at internet. Okay, so this is basically what my stream is doing. This is what it, what's going on for my stream. So, you know, my I, evidently, all I'm doing is streaming. I'm not surfing right now. So evidently, I'm sending... I'm doing uh, about a half of a megabit, it looks like. Well, that's not the same. This is data. This is kilobytes a second. Well, maybe they are not naming it right. I don't know. Now I don't know. You would think they would be. They're not talking about speed. They're talking about actual data. I, yeah, okay. So I don't know how to convert that to, uh, you know, speed rating. But that's how many kilobytes is being sent. Uh, a second there, right there. And then <clears throat> total kilobytes, total packets. I don't know how to know, you know, interpret that part. I don't. Th if it was saying megabytes or something, I would have some sort of an idea. But 
I can't convert kilobytes to megabytes in my head. Uh, <coughs> received. See, it's way lower because, you know, the streaming is the main thing I'm doing. Okay, now let's see. LAN. There we go. I have not ever sat here and looked at this. On the LAN, sent, received. That's, well, we're receiving a lot from the Wi-Fi, from the phones, from the video on the phones. So that's still being received even when uh, I'm not playing it on the video. So, um that's the thing that over time it will you know keep it, that's why the router keep, cache gets filled up and I have to keep rebooting it that's why I'm always talking about that now that is oh, oh this is on the wired connection though okay what's going through the wired connection e, both of them are going to fill up the cache but let's see okay so this is not a kilobytes a second that kind of makes some sense to me there so that that's not a whole lot. Okay, now this is the Wi-Fi. I would think that it would be a whole lot more, but it's not. Of course, see, it could be going very slow, but it's moving a lot of data, but it's going very slow. What? Now, I wonder <coughs> if I turn on that camera. Shouldn't be really, yeah, there's zero on the 5 gigahertz. Nobody and nothing is connected to 5 gigahertz. Okay. It's uh, broadcast and usable, but I don't have anything connected. It goes, it doesn't make it to hardly barely, it, it, you can't even use it in the living room. You can use it in here, but like I said, I only have one machine that can even connect to it. I guess I could, well, it wouldn't make any difference. It's, it's the, 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 uh, the, the Dell 6000 laptop, oh, I never did put, I never did put the driver on it. I'm using a wired connection on the laptop anyway, but it, uh, it's only 54 megabits max anyway, so, you know. 2 gigahertz will do way beyond 54 megabits, so it doesn't matter. Uh, 5 gigahertz wouldn't help. So, okay, now it's kind of gone up some. Now let me do this. I'm going to go over here to OBS Studio, and I'll do desktop and camera one. Okay, now let's see what we get. Let's see if it jumps up. It should jump up. Well, now the graph jumped up. So uh, I think that... I wasn't paying much attention to the graph a while ago, but boy, I'm seeing it now because it's really jumping up. And it's jumping up and down really fast so that it can't even finish making its graph. So <clears throat> it's refresh, trying to refresh faster, but that's that jumped up to 1,600 kilobits. Now, I know it's saying kilobytes. Actually, I keep saying it wrong. Evidently, what's down here, I'm going to say that means kilo, uh, kilobytes, just like down here. So this is a data measurement, not the speed measurement. <clears throat> okay, so um, I don't know. I can't copy. Oh, it won't. It goes away too fast. I was going to try to copy that and go put it in Google and say, well, how much of megabytes is that? I uh, can't do it. Let's see, 22, 25. Nice. That's a lot. 258. Two five eight two five eight. Two five eight two five eight. Let's try that. Two five eight two five eight kilobytes equals megabytes. Or maybe I should say M I B for megabytes. Oh, that didn't work. I think Google uses what everyone else uses. Yeah. <laughs> Did I mean, yeah, of course I did. I didn't leave the space in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's 285 megabytes. So it's not as much as it looks like. Conversion measurement, weights, and volume. Well, I should put on there something else. Okay, so there's a little converter. So 258. 258. Oh, thank you for logging out. <clears throat> now, where was I? Management statistics. Wi Fi. 258. And now it says 258609. Let's just do that now. 258. I just want to make sure I had the right how, enough decimals, even if, you know, you're not, it's changing. <coughs> uh, changing constantly. 
258 megabytes. Um, it's kind of staying in that range. So it's kind, kind I'm going to say it's uh, constantly transferring 260 megabytes. 0. 0.609, so that's grounded up to two. Well, 259, I guess. But anyway, <clears throat> some it's 250, 258, 259 megabytes. It's constantly transferring that much right now. Now let's go to to the uh, to the uh, second camera there, camera two, and let's see what happens. Hasn't changed much. Went up a little there, two five nine, oh four oh. So that's really interesting. <clears throat> so, oh, now let's try. Well, I'll just do it and then tell you about it. I'm going to do both cameras. Can't show them to you. Uh, 259, 280. It hasn't changed. It hasn't jumped up or anything. It actually went down some. 259, 436. <clears throat> yeah, it hasn't really changed that much. So, uh, well, let's just go back to the, well, no, yeah, let's go back to the desktop and see how much it changes. It hasn't changed much. Okay, that number doesn't change much. But the, the, the one that says kilobytes a second, I guess that's actually the speed. It changed a lot. It went down. So it's kind of hard for me to interpret it. Well, that's sending. No wonder it's about the same. That's sending. I'm watching sending. Well, but that's, oh yeah, well, that's what I, I wanted to see what was coming into the desktop from the cameras now. Okay, now received. That's more by quite a bit. And. The speed is more. Okay, now let's go back to one in desktop. That went up quite a bit, and it logged me out right when I want to look at it. This thing does that really fast. Okay. Yeah, see, it's one, two. Is it? <coughs> That's quite a bit. See, it's going between a thousand and something to two thousand kilobytes a second. Two thousand and seven kilobytes a second. Um, with camera one, that changed. Well, I switched back. Well, no, that wouldn't matter. I switched over there just to look. But okay, now let's go to camera two. That was 3,000 for a second there, and now it's 1,400. Anyway, I mean, of course, I don't know what's a lot and what's a little bit or anything. I'm just, well, I can, I can, I would have said that's no, no small amount of data. I would say that. <coughs> um, so really the one I was watching so much right there was, really I should probably should pay more attention to, yeah, because the scent over the Wi-Fi, well, <clears throat> see, this is in the router, not on the machine, or not on the phone. So what the router receives comes from the phones. What it sends, <clears throat> well, I guess it comes from the desktop out to the Internet. <laughs> <coughs> no way. <clears throat> that comes back to the phones because you got to go both ways. Every... Transmission has to go send and receive. <clears throat> Say, uh, here's some data. Okay. You know, and then thanks. And what's the data I've got in it? You know, what kind of data is it? You know, it's literally there's things like that that those equipment has to ask and know and all that. So there, there's actual real questions that they ask and tell, but I don't know what they are, but. Okay, I'm just trying to wrap it around my head what's going on here. But received is what's coming from the phones. I do get that. And that's a lot right there. Three, five, let's see. 
you can't copy that. Three five three, three five three, two two one seven. Three five three two two one seven. Three five three, two two one seven. Yeah, three thousand five hundred thirty-two megabytes. So now we're up into the gigabyte range. We don't want gigabit. We want gigabyte because we're still talking about data, right? Or do this. What's a? I never heard of a gib gigabyte. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, it's about what I thought. Three and a half gigabytes. That one I can kind of do in my head when I see it. So that's three and a half gigabytes. Now that makes an impact. I, I know that much. Now it's uh, bigger on the top. Oh, we're in the wired. <clears throat> okay. So three and a half gigabytes or so are being received right now while we're on camera two. Let's go to camera one and see if it changes a lot. It doesn't look like it's going to. So each camera, I'm going to say, is about three and a half gigabytes being received pretty much constantly, I guess. That's a lot. No wonder it's hard for it to do that. Now let's do both cameras. And again, I, you won't see it, but I'll try and... Well, it went up to 360. 3605. 360. Went up over that now. 361. 361. Whoops. 362. It goes so fast I can't get a number. 362. <clears throat> three six three. I'll just say three six three. How many zeros is that? One, two, three, four. Six three six three. One, two, three, four. Now it's three six five. Three six five. One, two, three, four zeros. Three six five. One, two, three, four zeros. Well, that's just a bit more than three and a half gigabytes. <clears throat> okay. Whoops. Let's go back to the desktop again now. Should change quite a bit. Well, it hasn't yet. And yeah, I don't. Anyway, that's a lot of data being streamed, and it's only being picked up and recorded or sent, you know, picked up and recorded and sent to YouTube if I select that camera but that's how much traffic is going over my Wi-Fi <clears throat> that's a lot kilobytes a second well my brain doesn't understand a reference for that um, so I don't know 103 kilobytes a second is what a converter Kilobyte. I don't think we're talking about kilobits. I think we're talking about kilobytes. So, <clears throat> now megabit. That's the speed measurement. That's what I kept talking about. And then kilobyte is what we're, what I believe we're there showing us there. Megabyte. Yeah, that's almost a megabyte. Well, no, it's not. 0 0.103 so that's not very very much so yeah I don't know how to interpret that as what's going on but and it changes a lot see it was 35 now it's 130 if I go back to <clears throat> desktop and camera stream goes up a whole lot though and I, I saw how much that was a while ago. And on the LAN, let's see. 
Well, it's kind of similar, it seems. Seems quite similar. Uh, and uh, let's see. Well, the LAN is only really doing the data going out to YouTube, <clears throat> but I don't know what's being received that's, you know, that much right there. Maybe that the LAN is actually really including, it may be including the wireless and the wired together. That's what I'm going to start to guess right now after watching this. Internet received shouldn't be all that. I wouldn't think it'd be so much. I'm mostly sending. Yeah, I'm mostly sending for sure. So, uh, <clears throat> That's that's cool. I'm going to open that up. System log features. Yeah, that's the best. Actually, the best thing I could have seen to get an idea about that. Anyway, do you see that up, up? All that traffic, I believe, is what's causing my camera to be um, fluctuating so much. That and what I showed you on the wireless signals going up and down like that. That's that's what I was trying to describe. So um, let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. Now see when I switch from that, majorly behind. My hand has not even come up in my preview yet. So I'm going to go to the desktop again and see if it will straighten it up some. I'm going to close that window, <coughs> close the browser too. And uh, <clears throat> seeing everything's still fine, the resources aren't being overused on the system. I do really well with that, with the settings I've been using for all this time. That's why I was really reluctant to try to change them. And uh, so now if I go back to the camera, let's see. Okay, well, I saw me scratching my nose right away. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, see what happens over there. It's just random as to what's going to happen. <clears throat> and I hate to switch on and off the camera like that, but, and it doesn't always fix it. Sometimes you can switch on and off several times and it won't fix it. You're just flipping back and forth in the middle of your video. So when I'm making a video, I try not to do all what I'm doing right now while I'm testing everything, you know, flipping back and forth and doing this and that. I, I improved it some I think on the on the SM58 the other one didn't actually need fixing at this at that point the wireless but um, yeah the wireless is going to have some delay in it you know because the, the wireless audio because it's going through the Wi-Fi but this has a negligible delay I mean the latency going from a microphone through a mixer through an effects unit and back to that computer the only that would be such a small I don't know what it would be but it tells you in the specs of each device but it would be so small the delay would be so small uh, <clears throat> it might even be a millisecond you know it might be what might be way under it well all three of them together you know but then when you get to the computer uh, that's where you start getting some real latency because then it has to go through the the uh, chips you know the everything in the computer and um, yeah, it's going to convert it to a digital signal. Now, when you convert from analog to digital or the other back or back the other way, every time you have to convert one way or the other, you that's where you get some real latency there. And that's the problem with wireless audio in a nutshell. <clears throat> but um, and then wireless audio and video together, well, you see what happens, uh, especially when you do it over. Well, I guess what I mean, I thought Wi-Fi would was pretty fast by now you know as fast as Wi-Fi is now I thought it should be able to do it way better than this but I guess what I didn't realize is my stream has quit again um, no reconnection successful it doesn't seem to pop up the OBS studio it doesn't see I, I don't see it pop up saying the stream is down it just pops up saying reconnection successful but um, <clears throat> Anyway, I'm glad it tells you something there because I don't always look over at my laptop. So, 
I the only I, I think well like again back what I said an hour ago I guess now only two choices I think I have is to, to just experiment again with the FFmpeg and uh, but try to do FLV because I know MP4 works this machine too hard it can't handle it <clears throat> I did that a while ago and then the other thing is to uh, do less video frames and that's going to be uh, well, I know that when I went down to 20 frames per second, it was getting pretty choppy. And uh, I believe I just did it on the phones. I didn't, like I said, I didn't match it on OBS Studio. If they're matched, I'm not quite sure. If you don't match them, I'm not quite sure what would happen. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, I, I don't really want to reduce from 30 frames per second on the because my desktop's working really well, my desktop video. But if I say went to, well, say if I, there is actually, uh, you know, one of the standards, one of the uh, commonly used video settings that you'll see in programs is 1080p at 24 or 25 frames per second. <clears throat> and so um, I could try that, do that on everything, this and the, uh, that's something I, I keep forgetting I could try doing the setting everything that way then it's all together and then maybe my desktop won't get won't be enough change to mess up my desktop but I don't think it'll be enough change to fix the cameras when they get when they get messed up as bad as they get messed up um, I don't know that there is a way to fix it but uh, even even doing that would fix it the only thing I can do is try it I guess but it's a real pain to do that. I mean, I have to change all three cameras. I have to change this app. And really, to get the full effect of what is going to happen, I need to change them all. I was thinking, well, I could just change one camera. I already tried that. I changed one camera. I tried 25, 24, 20. When I got to 20, I didn't even bother with 15 because 20 was already really choppy. But I didn't, from what I remember, I didn't ever change the OBS Studio because I was actually recording while I was doing it. What I'd have to do is change it and then turn everything on, and you know. But uh, I spent two days now trying to fix this, and I'm probably not about uh, about a millisecond closer, and about to maybe about a hundred about 120 milliseconds closer to being better. <laughs> um, see, when uh, only thing I can do actually is well, it's really strange is. If it looks really bad, switch off, go do some other channel, other uh, scene for a while, and then switch back to it, and it may straighten itself out again. One, two, three, four, five. See, it's been a few minutes now, and it's pretty well okay. But if I would not have switched around like that, and it really doesn't, I thought it was certain pattern, like going to desktop would fix it every time. Well, it doesn't because I've been doing it. Sometimes I can switch to camera two, and if camera two is bad, then that won't probably won't help. Then if if sometimes I can switch to camera two and back to one, and it'll camera one will be okay. Sometimes I go to desktop and switch back to camera one, it'll be okay, or just vice versa, round and round. So I guess uh, need wired cameras really. I need USB or whatever. There's always the old analog input cards, you know. Actually, I have one, but it's too low a resolution. I have a video surveillance card that came with the Net Pro Max. I think I have it in, I've got it in, it's not in this machine. I think I have it in the Red Black Battlestar, <clears throat> but I don't have any. It, the connectors on it, it has actually a, a pigtail of wires, like six, four or six. It could take that many cameras, you know, and it was a video surveillance system for a, a company. And, uh, <clears throat> but it has BNC connectors on it, and that would be the regular CCTV cameras. And those aren't still not cheap, you know, so it's really cheaper to buy a USB camera. You get a 4K USB camera for less than one of those would cost, so one of those would cost. And so I've never tried to buy any of those, and they're all, they're like, you know, 4, 480, 640 by 480, generally. I mean, I, I think they got up to 720. I don't think they ever made those cameras uh, higher. Well, they might be now, 
but see they are, they started moving to wireless and to USB on everything even the even the uh, you know surveillance stuff so <clears throat> well actually on the surveillance I'm sorry they did have some USBs coming out a few years ago but now everything is Ethernet with power over Ethernet so you run one cable an Ethernet cable that's what all the new stuff is is Ethernet cable so it is networked, but it is uh, not Wi-Fi, you know. Um, uh, I think that it's, well, actually, I was watching a couple of videos recently of demonstrations of some of the new stuff from this year uh, power, using Ethernet cables and power or Ethernet. I just remembered that. And I did see some lag and some latency and a little bit of ghosting when they would move. So even over the wired and they were just saying, you know, we like this wired because it's better than the wireless and you're not taxing your wireless network so badly. But, uh, and, and they didn't do it for very long, so I didn't get a very good look at it. But uh, it looked to me like it was not good enough for what I want, you know, especially for what you're going to pay. But I've had that in my head for years is the way I like to shoot live videos and everything and with OBS Studio uh, I would rather use OBS. I wouldn't want to use some proprietary, you know, switching software. But OBS will work with that kind of thing. It'll work with pretty much any kind of camera input. Anyway, I, you know, if you had a surveillance four 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 camera surveillance setup, I don't need the DVR. I use my computer. You know, if I had the cameras and the and the interface so that I could plug them into my computer. Actually, I just realized maybe that card that that. Uh, PCI card I have might might do that if I just got the cameras that were had BNC connectors. Well, like I said, I don't think the resolution would be as high as I want. I wouldn't be getting if I could get 720p, that'd be okay. Anything lower than that, I wouldn't want it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, set them up so that all you if you if you have four, then that's a lot of shots. And so all you have to do is just click on different shots. You know. Uh, that's why I do like this. I've got two cameras, uh, and and but I still, you know, I have to do a lot of moving around. You know, like if I want to do on the work table or if I want it behind me. But if I had four cameras, I could have them set. Be ideally, you could have them hanging on the wall or something, and all, and you don't ever have to move them. You just go over and clean the lenses every day. You know, and just switch, 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 switch. I always wanted to have that outside when I was working on a project. Maybe have one camera that you handhold, you know, that you move around to get close-ups and stuff. You know, or on a tripod or, or a mic stand or whatever and move it around. And the rest be in fixed positions to where all you have to do is switch. And as a matter of fact, you know, uh, surveillance systems can, uh, I've done it, you know, I've set it up before just with the PCs and, and webcams. Surveillance systems can, uh, can uh, switch if you have more than one camera, you can have them just turn on and take a video by movement or and or with or with you know I've, I've there's even with Windows is some of the first ones I use Windows 98. Um, you can have it either take video for so many seconds at a certain if it hears something so loud or if it has movement uh, and it works really well uh, and some of them will do both. Uh, so if you have a certain uh, de level of sound and a certain amount of movement, it will come on and take either, you know, well, of course, video fills up your drives really quick, so I usually did pictures, you know. And that fills up your drive, too. I ran them uh, for a few months on <clears throat> until I ran out of space to save any more JPEGs. You know, it was JPEGs what it did. But um, anyway, you can, uh, it would be, what I'm trying to say is, okay, if you had it set to sense movement and perhaps sound, and like I said, some of them can do sound and movement, you could set to get that tweaked out to the right combination. So let's say if you were outside in the garage or whatever working on a project and uh, you move over here, then it, then it switches to the other camera and gets you over there. And then if you turn on your table saw, then it switches to that one. And it wouldn't be 100%, but it would probably be 80 to 90% good switches you know all automatic you wouldn't have to do anything you wouldn't have to be always constantly looking at your OBS studio to switch everything so then you might use that surveillance software you know actually you might could uh, that might be an idea you might could use the surveillance software to automatically do the switching since that's what it's made to do 
and then uh, use uh, OBS Studio. Just send one feed of the final switch out to OBS Studio to send to YouTube. You can do that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's what is that? There's one that I try. I've used. I've played with on and off for years. It's a Linux surveillance setup. It's really cool. Uh, I can't think of the name of it, but uh, used to I would. Well, the only way I really successfully got it working well was uh, with a little live ISO live CD that I burned. Uh, Z, not Zen Map. That's networking. Zone Minder. It's called Zone Minder, and it will take. It's made to work on your PC, and it will take uh, Linux. It's a Linux. It run, well, actually, it originally was, like I said, a Linux distro, but it was also a set standalone app. It was hard to install and get it up and going back then. It might be easier now, but I think it'll run on Windows now, too. Uh, they kind of moved away from the distro-based setup to just this is our app. Put it on whatever you want, uh, our software and uh, it's open source and everything it will recognize USB cameras like I said a video card with BNC uh, uh, can CCTV cameras um, whatever you can hook up to a computer it'll recognize it and use it and uh, all, all I ever had was two USB cameras and I did get it working but only in the little live distro I never installed it on anything back then I didn't have a machine I could spare to install it onto you know that had enough resources, you know, powerful enough machine. And it didn't need a super powerful machine. I just, back in those years, I didn't have too many. But uh, anyway, yeah, that zone monitor would be an option. That was the one I always thought about using. I'd just combine whatever I could get, you know, uh, USB and, B and CCTV cameras or whatever. But actually, those CCTV cameras, I've looked at them. You know, like I thought, well, when they get old, uh, maybe I can pick some up real cheap. But boy, they, they're proud of those. I don't care how old they are. So, um, well, I don't look very often at those things. But you know, ever since the resolutions went up, you know, on cam uh, like your phone, now that the phone cameras do, and it's kind of hard to, well, the phone, my, my phone, these phones will do 1080p at, well, it's only around two megapixels in video, though. Uh, the CCTV cameras would do, for, you know, uh, let's see, well, 480 by uh, 6, I forgot the numbers. That would be, I think it's called, I think you would call it 480. Actually, I think it would be 480i, not 480p, because P only came in with 1080, I think, HD video. I think the, everything before that, I think, was I, if I remember right, or, or maybe less than I, no, not even an I. I've read before what I stands for and P stands for, but I've forgotten. But anyway, it had me confused when they first came out with it. What's I for a couple of years I thought 1080i was better than 1080p, but some not too long ago I was reading something that explanation of uh, over the years, you know, it's like oh okay, so I finally got that in my head. 1080p is the highest of 1080, and then there's 4K, and I don't know, I haven't. All I know is is 4K. Well. Of course, 8K is on the way. It's Well, there's 8K cameras already, but 4K is the new 1080. So <coughs> I don't, um, that, you know, if I was really going to spend any money on cameras, I still would probably rather buy one nice camera than uh, four, you know, so so cameras. So. But it would be really cool to be able to just switch, especially auto switching. That I've always thought that'd be so cool. Now, when you're doing a desktop video, you're probably going to have to manually switch it because, you know, how it is, it, that sense and audio movement is, uh, I mean, switching or turning the camera on and off is what you did with, with the ones I had. It just turned the camera on and then it would run for 10 to 30 seconds, however long you wanted to set it for. I think you could set it for an hour. And then it would turn off again until another event happened, you know. But um, I thought about setting it in such a way that it, you know, it's a studio. It's a it's a video studio for you, automated video studio. So anyway, <coughs> I haven't ever got to try that. <coughs> I'm sure they, they, they're working towards things. They'll have that sort of thing. They are, I, they kind of, I haven't ever heard of anybody, say like in a TV studio or anything using that yet. So anything like that, but. 
they have um, they already have software that ended up being bought out by Kodak that I really wanted to get. It was actually available. Well, there was a website that you could use and you could upload videos, and it was kind of aimed at phone videos. But you could upload videos from um, multiple different sources, and it would automatically the algorithm in the software would automatically see the best shot and the best angle and put it all together. You could put, you know, two to five or whatever. Well, if you owned the software, I guess you could do two to a hundred. I don't know. There might have been a limit in that software, but I know you could do like five different shots at, at least. And uh, the website was encouraging people to upload their videos of like events and stuff, you know, live events. And then the, then the copyright trolls got all over it and the website got ended up getting shut down. And, uh, but in the, and that, and that same, I'm sure it's the same software cause I followed it from the first time I heard about it. Uh, you couldn't just download the software and try it out or anything or even buy it. And then, uh, at the very beginning, I think maybe you could download it for windows, but I didn't want windows didn't know that it, I thought it would I thought it was going to end up being accessible I think it started out open source maybe I can't remember now but anyway Kodak has it now and they've been working on it and I don't know I haven't checked in in no, several months to a year but um, they're going to I'm sure they're going to make a product line out of it and it'll whatever it costs you know and it'll probably run most uh, probably only run on Windows maybe Windows and Mac and uh but it'll be, they were already kind of marketing it, saying how wonderful it's going to be. And there was demos of it. And it works pretty good. It's not as good as a real video editing person. But it showed, okay, here's the three. Here's mom and grandma and a Andy June, you know. And they take videos at, at the same time of the kids doing something out, you know, running around outside. Here's each video. And they just showed short clips. And then they showed, okay, now here's what our software can do with it. And it's pretty cool. Now, for me, that'd be awesome because I love making video, but I don't love spending another week editing a, a four hours of video, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that's what I'm waiting on. Okay, so um, one, two, three, four, five. See, there's no... Not a finger behind. I'm going to say after all that time, it's just fine. But if I was to switch to something else, especially, well, I don't know. It doesn't matter if I get on desktop or another camera or what. I could switch to something else and switch back to it either right away or after a while. It's liable to be just slow motion. So there we go. That I've exhausted my brain thinking about it uh, the last two days. So. If it's not too bad tomorrow, I will just go back into my work that I need to do. And uh, <clears throat> But if it's really bad again, maybe I'll try those things I mentioned about. Uh, I'm going to try to remember right. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I can take a break. But did I? Yeah, I'll try to remember to look and see if it's even possible to set it at FFmpeg and FLB. Uh, because when I did it a while ago, I think it defaulted to FFmpeg and MP4, or else I did it on purpose and forgot that I did it on purpose. Because I was thinking about changing it to MP4, and then I thought I changed my mind and didn't do that. So I thought, oh yeah, I remember. The, whatever the defaults were, ended up being MP4. I would have had to manually change it if it's even possible. Okay. So anyway, I'm too tired to go through it again. I'm going to go now, because I'm actually about to die to have a break now gone as long as I can possibly go and aren't you glad that I'm finally done uh, of course you're not here watching are you okay well bye bye mm -hmm.